Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Door Before Clear. This is the Vegas, post-Vegas episode, and half of us are running on three hours of sleep. Freddie? Half? I think I'm the only one. TJ got home early. Raja has been here for a week. I mean, he's probably saying early. Home. Earlier. Raja has been here for a week. <laughs> yeah. Earlier. <laughs> I'm on about four to five, so, yeah. which makes a difference, but. Who are you? I'm, uh. I'm Freddie Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm TJ Major, spotted on the sixth card that did not touch the seven card. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Freddie Craig? Spotted Bubba Wallace, Kyle Sieg, and Ty Dillon this week. And we have no Brett. Brett is, uh, I wish I could go into detail about what <laughs> Brett is doing. Why don't we go into detail? Because I don't want to. It's a, Wait, it's come a on. bad detail <laughs> to go into. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, um, but, so he's in a bad spot right now, probably, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Like, oh, if, if, oh, yeah, it's not good. Is uh, he in the country? He'll be okay. Uh, what's that? He's still in the country? No, yeah, he's in the country. Yeah, okay. he's, he's, uh, yeah. Is I he, love how that's the first a, thing you go to. A, <laughs> he's having a procedure done. We'll say that this morning. Uh, but uh, on my right, replacing Brett in a much better light. Uh, somebody I met, <clears throat> I don't know, when the hell did we meet? Probably when Bubba was in the 43. I don't know. Maybe yeah, like that. 19 or 20, maybe. Yeah. Uh, some a kid that's really talented, and he's been kind of bothering me about coming on here because I know he's at first it was kind of like a joke I know he's not going to ever shut up is what the problem is <laughs> so we, were, we were trying to Pretty delay much. it as long as possible but I said if as long as you do something good or bad like something spectacular and then he did it this the other night so Raja welcome congratulations on your first truck series win brother thanks Freddie well or, or what am I supposed to do? You're just supposed to say hi. Just, oh, you're here now. <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> All right. Well, you've had a pretty solid weekend, so to speak. Tell us, you know, from the point the checkered flag dropped to now, what has it been like now that you've had your first win? Um, honestly, it just hasn't felt real, you know. Like I, I had a lot of text, right? So that was that's been like a task getting through them, but that's honestly a blessing. Um, I mean, it just hasn't felt real. Like throughout the weekend, like it just was. I don't want to say it was smooth because it wasn't easy, but like all the stuff we prepared for, like I felt like prepared for everything that kind of happened on, on Friday night. So it just, it all kind of worked out. How many texts did you have? Uh, at one point it was like over 600. Is that why it took you two days to answer me? Yes. <laughs> okay, just check. That is 100%. <laughs> yeah. So I figured it out. Like normally when you text a guy, like you don't want to be in the first wave. You just wait most yeah, of the time. Yeah, I usually do, but I want to get this lined up because I had to let. Uh, yeah, oh but, yeah. By the way, shout out to Kelly Crandall. I love you, Kelly. I apologize. Uh, I had text. I knew what Brett was going to be out, so I had text Kelly. So you canceled Kelly. Well, for I said it was funny because I texted her and I said, I said, uh, well, I'd love for you to fill in for Brett. She said, oh, yeah, I'd love to do it. Awesome. I said, the only way that anything would change is if basically Raja wins. Or uh, like Jesse Love maybe would have been another one. But like I said, that's it. I said, I said <laughs> Raja or some other storybook win. And some <laughs> goes and wins the race. I text Kelly. I was like, well, sorry. Oops. I said Raja. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but she, uh, we'll get Kelly back on. Brett's going to miss 14 more shows before the oh, end of the year. Oh, 100%. So yeah. We'll have yeah. plenty of time. But um man just this race you know i i was i was on here last week and we've talked about this i don't know how many times till you know we always you know anytime you reach out or i talk to you about anything it's just about being in position and this was the perfect example i thought i watched at one point you had a big run down the front straightaway on i forget who the two, the two leaders were maybe majeski and somebody and kb yeah and you started to look like you started to fade well bottom, that's the thing what and i was like oh no here he goes yeah and then he backed out and i was like okay great yeah. and then you just you just maintain that track position all day long and then obviously very fast truck spire trucks have been money yeah. to, to open the season but you know just talk about how that race played out for you well i guess we'll start from practice um like it was it was windy right and that was a thing i didn't know how much it would affect the truck so i've run more xfinity races at vegas than i have truck races so that's kind of like my baseline for most places and um i feel like the xfinity stuff is they honestly drive really well compared to the truck stuff and so that was something i was having to think about like oh this is not that easy you know in three and four especially with how fast the trucks were so but practice and qualifying went well um and honestly like that was my i mean i started up front at i think nashville last year um but besides that, for my mile and a half stuff, like that's the fastest truck I've had on a mile and a half before. So I just honestly, like, like I let the ninth, I didn't chase the 19 and the three, like the first lap was like, let me just figure it out, you know, because it's it's one thing to like qualify well and practice like by yourself, but it's completely different, like running off in there wide open, you know, when you're up to speed for the first time with like the Xfinity rubber on the racetrack from practice and stuff like that. So, um, 
and you talked about like you know when when KB and Majeski were, were racing and, and Nick and Majeski and I honestly just was trying to figure it out right like mm -hmm. you wonder like you know how it'll feel when somebody's on your right rear you know if you're even with somebody in the corner and stuff like that so honestly we're just trying to let it come to me and then when we lost a little track position at the end of stage two I was like I thought I was screwed because I was like, this is the furthest I've been back all night. So I didn't know how I was going to drive, but I just kind of saved my stuff a little bit and waited for the stop. So, yeah, I mean, and it's the biggest thing. It's like, I've told you this before. I told a lot of young drivers, like if you just put yourself in the top five and Rajas had speed all year last year and he made mistakes and we've talked about it on here, which I've talked about with him multiple times and you, and you cost yourself damage to truck and you're not now you're not there to capitalize. These other guys at the end of this race make all these mistakes, and here you are. Now you just got to run down one guy. You know, um, was it Taylor? Right, was leading. So you know, like I think Kyle had a, a pit crew penalty. Yeah, there was Majeski a couple penalties. sped. I think yep. Sanchez sped. Like they're just yeah. the, people are going to just hand you stuff, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, holy! Shit, I just got to run this well, one yeah. way down. And was crazy. Like for so me and Ty waved at the same time to, to pit, and I'm like, well, maybe I can try to sneak up to him to the line. And we passed our, our hot, or our, me and Joey's uh, heart mark, or hard mark in, yeah. um, in the middle of three and four. I'm like, wait, I'm going to miss it. So I was like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't sneak up to him. And I felt like I got to the line, and I was like, I'm way over my lights. And I looked at the little sheet, and I was 44. And I was like, oh, I was okay. But yeah, obviously he was. That first you know, section reads a little slow. But there was yeah. a, like that whole. Yeah. Yeah. They, plus, the, they moved the lines, too. Yeah. But, yeah and, I mean, but, but the truck series is all about not beating yourself. I mean, restarts are where everyone most of the time does it. You got to get what you can, but you got to be smart about it too. And and uh, uh, like Freddie said, there was two or three times that race that I saw you lift, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's not not normal for Raja to lift right here. Like, and there was one time on the front right there, and there was one time on the exit of two where I, where I think somebody might have been passing you. You were just like, okay, we'll go ahead right now. I'm not sure. I don't remember who it was, but um, that was a very smart race, and um, you get rewarded for it. So, I mean, that's, that's what you, I mean, obviously having speed, you have already got that box checked. You got speed. Now, as these races go, if you keep racing with that, with that mentality, you're going to get better and better and be harder to beat. So I think it was a very well-driven race and well-deserved win. Thanks. Also, one thing that was interesting is like when you're, it's so, such a dogfight running from eighth to 20th. Like mm -hmm. if you like, you can take any one of those guys in, in trucks from 15th to 20th run and then you give them track position and it's like impossible to pass them you know yeah. so yeah. and and the honestly they're everybody's pretty good you know and so um but like upwards of fifth like you know it was pretty fair because it's like we're already kind of away from everybody so it's like i mean when Corey got to me at the end of stage two i was like well let me not be that guy and chase him down like we're this is for second and third like if it's the playoffs right that, that's one thing for mm -hmm. like the last point at martinsville or whatever but it's the third race of the season, right? So I, I thought that was cool just about, like, not giving take, right? You race hard, but it was also, like, pretty fair. That but was gain respect from guys, too. You know, next time if you're the roles reverse, he's going to probably do the same thing with you. You know what I mean? Like, um, I think that's a, a good decision. You don't ever want to, you don't ever want to, like, you make your own luck, right? I mean, you put yourself in a bad spot, bad things happen. So, no, I, I mean, there, there's nothing that I saw that I thought you could have changed for that race. I mean, I thought you drove a great race. So let's back up a little bit. I know I, you know, kind of I racing again comes up in, in your background. Where where where's Raja Karuth come from? So I was born in Atlanta, but I, I'd say I grew up in DC because that's where I went to school. Um, I mean, I grew up watching racing, but I did not. My first race was in a legend car, and I when I turned seventeen, and then I raced I racing like for the year prior. So very late, um, I did. I've done probably less than fifty total legend car races. Um, Late you got more i racing races than Denny Hamlin. I've like I've done like ten thousand. <laughs> yeah, like over twenty five hundred high races. Um, and then yeah, I mean just I, I made the drive for diversity program with Rev um, in nineteen, and then was there through through Legend Cars, uh, late models, Arca, um, and they like gave me time to develop because like sometimes you'll see these programs like they'll give a kid a couple races or a year, then yeah. they just you know go on to the next guy, right? And they like were patient with me for a little while just to figure it out and. Thankfully, like my first year in late models, it just started to kind of click. And um, in ARCA, like I had a couple chances, I think, to win. Like I think about Charlotte, I think about Kansas, Pocono. Like I threw away those races, and that honestly, I feel like cost me the championship that year. Well, Kansas, you kind of got jammed up right there. So, yeah. But like I think about Charlotte, yeah. you know, I think about yeah. um, 
you know, and then I, we, you know, changed crew chiefs in the middle of the year and, and some other stuff kind of went on behind the scenes. But, um, and then last year I thought it was going to be like, oh, I was going to be like, I'll, I'll be fast, you know, easy, easy, easy. And it was not that at all. Right. Like the Xfinity stuff I did with Alpha Prime, like, especially like before they took the skew out, like, okay, I could run 20th, 17th, 15th, 12th on a good day. Um, and then I, it was not that last year. Like it, it was so hard because I thought it was like I could just do the same things and drive super hard and like not get bit in the butt for it. And mm -hmm. I definitely paid the price a lot of times. But I think like after that first Kansas race last year, it's kind of like, all right, like let me just calm down and it kind of. Yeah, and I know sense. I know this win is obviously monumental for you, but for for more than one reason, I feel like I feel like, <clears throat> and maybe this is you know not the correct perception, but I feel like you've kind of you've kind of bet on yourself in a lot of ways this year. Like you know th this was you know I don't want to say this might have been your last shot, but it's like it was. I if, mean, if you don't make it happen now, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, the way you see it, like last year, like I mean, Grant makes goes and makes the final four. You know, the McAnally trucks are fast all year, and you know. The other two GMS trucks, like we we didn't run super good, so I thought I was really fortunate to get this shot this year because most people don't even get one, let alone two. So, um, I mean, the way I see it is like same with the Hendrick race at Phoenix last fall. Like, even if that was it, like I I know that that was my shot, so I had to do the best I can. Like not just in the car like that day, but like leading up to it, away from the racetrack as a whole. So you're definitely right. Like thinking about it, like you know that was it for me. Well, you got a first step out of the way but you're not done yet no yeah you still got, you got 19 races left go, 19 brother. races left <laughs> i feel like there's enough stuff that's happened for him this season already for a whole season <laughs> dude i know literally like like literally i can't tell y'all how like so daytona man that was crazy because you know, like like I, I got tight i mean yeah and i look in the mirror and i see like taylor's one of my buddies and i look and see his roof numbers i'm like wait can i cuss on here yeah i look in the mirror i'm like holy shit, like i that does not feel good seeing like you know him flying through the air and like seeing him land you know so definitely a a crazy start to the season so we sure. had we had bub on here uh right after daytona and of course there was a big deal made about that Pitt which it deal. really wasn't that big i, of a I mean deal. i know it, it wasn't, really wasn't like when people start texting me like what's raja and bubba fighting i was like i doubt mm -hmm. it if they are it's probably a joke uh <laughs> but i, just, I mean and and l listen we can give him shit. like he gave you a bunch of shit when he was on here right we can give him shit because I remember that uh, you, he'll be the first one to victory lane, and that son bitch was in the Cosmo or so something. So I heard that. Out. Yeah. Well, he called me when we were riding into the airport. I I totally forgot about that conversation, and he told me he's like, "Well, this is the one time I didn't have my bus." I was like, "Oh, oh boy." Yeah. I was giving him stuff. I was giving him crap about all day yesterday. I was like, "Real nice." Told the kid you'd be the first one to victory lane, and now I got a video of you watching on TV from but, some nice ass hotel. Yeah, but really, I mean you've had to face some tough criticism from Bubba and from other mentors of yours that are pretty high profile. How have you handled that? And especially now that you finally reached what your goal or one of your goals? Um, well, I think for one, I, I don't want to say I've reached anything yet. Like we still have a whole season, right? Like it's, it's one race and I'm glad everything kind of worked out, but like, let's talk about that in November, you know? Um, but honestly, like, I think a lot of that stuff helps me because I grew up like playing sports, like basketball, ran track, play soccer. So I, I work well, like in that type of coaching environment, like that's how I get better. So it, I mean, I don't take a lot of that stuff personal, like, plus I know the, the people care. Right. Um, and I, I, obviously the people that are talking crazy, like they don't matter. They're not putting my trucks together. They're not supporting me. So it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Fair. Did you watch cup race? I did. What'd you think? Um, well, I have to like differentiate, right? Because like I can look at like the SMT and stuff, you and like can't be biased towards the Hendrick right. cars either. The Hendrick cars, back <laughs> or the Spire <laughs> cars. I mean, well, I mean, the I'm Spire cars the good. one looked just like your truck, so I was saying that is true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, <laughs> I might have done good. It was interesting because it's like, like I said, like whenever I watch the Xfinity and Cup races, like I look at it like analytically and not at like as a fan, you know. So it's interesting, um, just kind of how the race went with lines and stuff like that. Um, and then knowing, like having driven the cup stuff on the sim a little bit and knowing how it drives and seeing kind of, oh, well, that's why he did, he did that or that's why he had a lift there and stuff like that. So it's, it's interesting to watch. But I mean, I like watching every race, like even if it's boring. Like if I, I were like a, if I were a student like you during that point in time, um, I would be like whenever I missed a couple races last year, I watched most of the races on SMT. 
just because well, right. you, can, you can see, you know what's going on so much more, and you can you have a feel of what the flow of the race a lot more than just watching it on TV. I wish they would. So for for that, they obviously the cup stuff. Y'all have like the actual steering traces, throttle, oh, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, it's way way better than way better than them uh, accelerom- accelerometers or what yeah. Do you say, I wish. Freddy? How's that word go? I don't know. I <laughs> can't even say super cellular. You want me to say accelerometer? <laughs> but I wish they would, um, because like obviously the trucks have Elmore and like on the dashes we have the throttle sensor or yeah. whatever. I mean, even if you put that on SMC, I feel like that would be. That would be cool to see. Yeah, I would. It's it's weird because you know how when you look at the truck and Xfinity stuff, sometimes you get the you get you're not sure. If like you're lift. like in the wall yeah. and like rolling. Or that, and you're not 100 percent sure if it's a lift because they get down to the corner and you're like it shows a little bit of, like the you know it shows a little bit of decel or something. And you're like in reality, uh, it, like yeah, yeah, he's uh, probably not lifting, but yeah. It was funny we were watching qualifying. As Tyler had SMT up on his iPad, and it's like I like watching qualifying because you can see like who's lifting. Like through one and two, it's like oh yeah, it's like a uh, straight line. Okay, this is gonna yeah, be a good yeah. one. Or then it's like just a little eighty yep. percent quick. It's like, you know, uh, it's like yeah. Ah, yeah. that's it. That's I, I do <laughs> think I saw somebody post a tweet one time that they shouldn't do it exactly during live qualifying with the SMT stuff because you takes out it takes the excitement out of yeah I, um, of the lap I, you're talking about like uh, the overlay you know, yeah like, like the cartoon. as it's going like yeah, do agree. it like I, a I, I, oh for the broadcast JR yeah. Houston I think was one of the ones that tweeted it that I saw but yeah he's right like and then I already know how it's going to be the, and then the, it's really funny because sometimes yeah. you can see you know being familiar with SMT and stuff you'll see like when they get to the line then they're not lined up correctly you know what I mean like so yeah. so now the guy will beat him to the line, but the but guy it won't, be the, right. it won't be correct. Yeah. You know, it's like what the hell happened there? Like, yeah, you know? like I like <laughs> I like seeing the tracker, but like having like the ghost car in there, I feel like is a little confusing. Because like, for example, like I went back and watched truck off line. Like they only showed like my back half of the lap, but what I wanted to see was like me coming to coming green, to green yeah. right? Because I well, felt yeah, like that's I'm, where the whole thing starts. Well, that's what I'm gonna say. Like exactly, like especially in the truck stuff, like with how like watered down the motors are and stuff and how draggy the it's things like Daytona like, exactly yeah. like getting up to speed through the gears it's everything. and all that it's everything yeah. yeah and that and I went back and I'm like well I felt like I did that pretty good I would want to see it on TV and then they show like have to laugh you know <laughs> yeah. and they're just so the ghost cars so uh, cup race for I don't know for me it was terrible for you guys I mean the, the so what why no we like, couldn't get the left front lug off so it just was like uh, I don't. Yeah, it was stuck on there. I think they. I think it got over tightened. I. What, I don't. The terminology the tight the changer uses like it sucks up too hard. Like it sucks up. Like he said he got on the gun a little too early and it over tightened it. Like they. I guess they knew like when the next stop because that was after it wasn't like we started the race with that on there. We had That's done crazy one little slip up stop. like that. He said it was like milliseconds. Like he said he clipped the cone. You know the the center of the wheel there and it like hit the trigger like a, a millisecond earlier than he wanted to and it over tightened it. Uh, he said, because he said, he's like, we knew like that was going to be, we knew the next stop, we we're going to have trouble getting that tire off. And it's just, uh, you know, it, it, it obviously ruined our day. Um, yeah. But, you know, we were, we were okay. We were, we were really tight, especially deep in track. We were kind of buried around 15th, 18th. Um, and we were really tight back there. Maybe some track position, you know, you know how it is. Like you get oh, back yeah. in the field and it's just, yeah, we spent you just, the first part just, of the race back there. Yeah hell back there but uh i don't know hopefully i I was encouraged by the speed the toyotas had the rest of the toyotas bell had some issues um but larson goes out there and leads 180 that's probably one of his top three best tracks now i mean Uh he's just something fits with him there and he's good yeah it's yeah and and i think william probably would at the beginning of the race william was right there with him and then i don't know they got that gigantic bag. garbage bag that I seen flying yeah. around for. It was like that laps. peach they had at Chicago Land like 15 years ago. <laughs> and apparently oh, yeah. there was a beer can stuck as well. That's so. I see Rudy's head. There was a silver bullet in his air cleaner. Nice. That was an orange. It was probably man. Rudy's. He probably it was an orange. <laughs> orange. It was an orange. It was, oh yeah, yeah, Chicago. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember uh, old modified guy. Yeah, that was my. That was Todd Zegedy. I've done some modified races yeah. for him, but yeah, that's what he's more famously known for. <laughs> Not I winning the modified race aloud, but almost hitting that orange. On the broadcast, they. They did kind of allude to more tire issues between lug nuts, cutting tires early. I mean, did you notice any tire issues, or do you think it was just I really? I think it was all. I think it was like I think ours was just a, a fraction of a second mistake. Um, Christopher uh, cut Christopher, a tire. I assume just yeah. same cut, thing, like cut just a tire or something. Bell, yeah, Bell said. Uh, seen Adam say he thinks they ran something over on the parade laps because it yeah. went down right away, um, and then. Uh, Busher, I assume, just a loose wheel. I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't. I didn't talk to anybody. I just, I just see the they, the way you look at it on camera. They, Fox did an unbelievable job. You get, you give them crap about the the camera work, the, whatever you yeah. want about the production. The camera that work on one. that was amazing because yeah. you can see, you could literally see the nut, the nut fly off, off, the wheel yeah. fly off. That yeah. was insane. Wrecks. 
Yeah. And I mean, he hit a ton. I hope he's all right. I heard yeah. said he was, you know, a little maybe took the wind down him or something. Yeah, he but said he, it was, he hit a ton on the radio. I mean, he broke the damn wall. They were yeah, up there fixing the wall for 20 yeah. minutes. Yes. How about Noah? I mean, Listen, he's been Noah. Sl- that's not a surprise at all. That's not a surprise at all. He, to me, very well, under the radar, too. We were, he was, I don't know what he didn't qualify. I didn't see his qualifying lap, but he must have uh, he made just a under, mistake. No, he just underdid under it. Under Yeah. Because he was fast in practice. I'll and, tell you why. Is because his teammate had already. Oh, yeah. They were yeah, already yeah. down one car, so it wasn't. You so know. he so he was fast in practice, and then he qualified very badly. Yes, and I was like, "Damn, what the hell happened?" Yeah. Maybe he just caught a good lap or whatever. And then we fell back, and we were, you know, seventeenth, eighteenth ish, and we were racing with like Briscoe and some guys, but it was like kind of back and forth. Like it was Hosevar, like the, all the guys that finished around there. And then out of nowhere, I don't know where the hell he started, but here comes. I said, "Who this?" Is? I didn't recognize the car because it was a wacky paint. Scheme. Oh yeah, it was. And I was like, "Who's that?" <clears throat> I look up, it's a ten. I go, "All right, ten's coming." And he just like boop, like uh, just drove through the whole line of traffic. I was like, "Well, sh- yeah. like where's he going?" We then, restarted right behind him, and he took off. And I was like, "All right, well maybe we get Noah here." And then nah, that wasn't that <laughs> yeah. wasn't going to be the case. <laughs> well, I don't even know where he ended up in the top ten, right? Yeah, he was like six. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was yeah. he was he was really strong I all mean, day. Complete opposite of the SHR cars, the rest of them. I seen where yeah, Briscoe was kind of back and forth. It was weird with him. I there was one run yeah. that they said like he was like hauling the mail, you know, and then I don't know what happened. I think I Chase just. Like he he puts him, it's like a, a hundred and ten percent every single lap, and sometimes like it works out for three. It, it'll he'll get three spots that way, and then he loses five. You know and that yeah. slowly. I, and I feel like um, at one point I saw Josh up there on the top ten. He got he had a couple of good runs there in the middle of the, in the middle of the race, but I think um, maybe a late race restart or something. He fell back a little bit, but yeah. That, I mean the ten was definitely probably the best Stuart Haas car. I feel like the fourteen and four were probably. Rate, I mean, I don't feel like they were terrible. I feel like they were, you know, just outside the top ten, which that's yeah, not, yeah, it's no. bad. You know what it's, I mean? So, yeah. and the it's, forty-one was. It's going to be bag, interesting so. to see. It's like I listened to the teardown, or I listened to like half the teardown last night on the way home when I got home, and uh, the <laughs> Jeff and Jordan basically fought the entire show, well, the, the entire <laughs> part that I've listened to, because Jeff is trying to get takeaways from last night yeah and jordan's like it's all right i'm not i'm not putting any stock into what i seen yesterday yeah. it's like so but you know in a ways right it's not like nothing that we didn't expect you know well, let's go back to last week you know you we made a comment i said i wanted to see what the front row cars do this week and yeah there was yeah 20 yeah so was. i mean you were a little more optimistic and i, I mean you never know i wasn't sure but <clears throat> um it's just tough, man. Like, oh yeah, it's not easy in that in that group. No, man. We talked about it before. Like, the, just the different. You look and see who's running twentieth, and this is to your point. Like in trucks and in the Xfinity series, like if you if say you you run a race for Alpha Prime, and you're probably expected to run fifteenth ish, twentieth, somewhere in that range. To ask you to run twelfth, three spots better is like true. Fuck. So you know it's I mean? funny, like, yo. <laughs> it's funny you say that. So at, at Phoenix last year, like I thought I was like, oh, it's like. I've been struggling my butt off to run 15th or 12th and, and that stuff. Like, oh, it's going to be easy. It oh, was yeah, not. Yeah, Hendrick car, yeah. Yeah. And then, like, I get in that thing and, man, I'm racing the snot out of, like, Brett Moffitt and, and Jeff Byrne. I'm like, and those guys are good. Like, I've obviously raced those guys over the last couple of years. But it took me, like, till stage three to get into the top ten, you know? And yeah. it just, like, everybody is, like, that much better the higher you go. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, that, that to close that gap, people don't realize. You know, it's a, it's easy to Super say, hard. like, oh, you, know, you should be in the top 15 instead of 20th. I'm like, yeah, well, look, look at the guys that finished 15th to 20th this week and yeah. tell me how easy it is to pass them guys. You know, well, we, like, we, like, that's what we went up against. The first year at RFK, we were not very good. And then to gain the ground that we did to even be where we were last year was big deal. Big, huge difference. But, like, dude, I, we passed a bunch of cars, and I looked up and – I'm like, ah, oh, we're going to be good here. And I'm like, oh, we're 23rd. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Um, it took us a long time to get through there. We were really good in the long run. And anytime, anytime it didn't settle into a long run, it kind of hurt us a little bit. And it was, we had a really bad pit stop. Not pit stops, um, but pit stall. We had to, three who had a really good day. Um, he was fast. We had to come around him. And then as we would get stopped, the 41 would come around us. So that was a very, um, I mean, it starts with qualifying. You don't qualify good. You don't get your good pit stall. You don't get a good pit stall every time you come out. You don't get you don't get a chance. Like our pit crew is one of the better ones on pit road, if not the best pit crew on pit road. And man, like 
you don't give them guys a chance to work, right? You, yeah. You're taking away the advantage that you have there. So it just it all starts that, with, with un- quali- how you unload. That same thing happened to Reddick at some point in the race yesterday yeah, because he back. like we had we had qualified fifth, so we had an opening. Then behind us was the ten, and then it was Reddick, and it just so happened to one of them deals where. Reddick was the highest running guy, then the 10, and then us. So yeah. we're all coming around each right other. Each other yeah. And like you, 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 eventually somebody's going to get blocked in there. And it was the 10 yeah. ended up blocking Reddick in. But yeah, you th- I mean, and you talk about qualifying. Like we weren't very good to start the race yesterday. And same thing. Like you pass a bunch of cars where you qualify and you're like, oh, damn, yeah. we're good. And we're 23rd. I looked up and we're like, qualifying makes such a difference. Like we're, I feel like we're going backwards. I feel like we're running 40th. And I look and we're 16th. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, all right, we're still, we're not bad here. We, you know, we just got to get a couple pit stops and get, you know, get a couple adjustments, and maybe get better. But yeah, qualifying yeah. Like, basically sets your whole weekend up. Like that makes me think about two things. Like one, for the most part in every series, like there's very few scrubs. Like everybody is, <laughs> yeah. is pretty good. Even if, if you look at, the twenty place know, guy. Man. If we uh, we if we could probably say there's a handful of scrubs. Or something. You you say that, <laughs> but know, you won't call them out. I know what you out. mean, though. Like, <laughs> it's hard. Like, it's yeah. super hard. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it's it's like you you can literally take. I I'll, I'll refer to truck racing because that's what I've been doing. Like, you can say I don't know who finished twentieth, but if you look at a guy where like Dean Thompson, like I think Dean is good, and Dean can show up and run up front, and like lead laps. You look at Charlotte last year. You look at I think Phoenix, and like he'll run good. And then you'll have a day where they miss it, you know, and then same for us. Like, I can run good one week and then miss it another week. But another thing that I thought was cool is, like, obviously you play on iRacing for years and you just, you know, you just drive the thing on pit road and drive to the pit boxes and, you know, turn off the pit crew guys and stuff or whatever. In real life, that is, like, nuts because, like, <laughs> it matters so much. And obviously Vegas and Phoenix, like, those are, like, the most slickest, you know, pit boxes. Um, but it matters so much, like, how you lock the tire, how you get angled having your your wheels straight like the the picker guys are so good because like they practice to like every single input that you do to the car so it's it's like crazy like how accurate you have to be yeah fair. i can't imagine like you know coming down that pit road with just people everywhere especially yeah. if you're mid-pack or towards yeah. the back oh or my gosh like that. even worse than the cup race because at least i will say at least in the truck race and xfinity race you get there's usually some more empty stalls yeah um but in the cup race man it's yeah. It is like, and I think a lot. So I think our, which I don't know. What do you look for coming down the road? Do you just look for your sign they're holding, or you look for your hanging? Well, sign? so I usually, like, I I know like which what box is mine, so I know where I need to be looking anyway. Like, Daytona and, and Atlanta, I was pretty early, so I was already looking left as soon as I got to the line. But this weekend, I was I was four, so I was all the way down. So I'm I have like my little Avengers logo is my pit sign, so I'm looking for that. Like I'm not looking. Above, yeah, you know, that's what our so ours broke yesterday because I guess because it's probably windy, windy probably, yeah. Um, and Bubba was like, I don't know, I never look for that thing. Anyway. I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> I, it's it's too much to look at. Plus, I bet like, night races are all, everything like all the all night races on the cup now. side, everything's lit up, yeah, so it's wild. Uh, Xfinity, anything happened in Xfinity race? I don't know, John Hunter, John Hunter. So Chandler was really good again. Chance two years in a row, Chandler probably should have won that did they, race. Did they get into like a disagreement? Racing each other at some point, yeah. On the radio, did anybody hear that? I thought I heard I've something heard where they before. were mad at racing each other that hard or whatever, like on each other's doors Probably. or something. I mean, they're racing for the lead. I, I get it, you know. Yeah. Um, and it seemed like whichever one got the lead just led the rest of that. Yeah. S- well, what that what is your opinion on that? Because I was listening listening to Sirius this morning, and they were talking about how you know black flag of John Hunter running. He's a Cup driver taking away wins and strong finishes from I hate the lim- I hate that they have the limit why honestly I mean how are we gonna get better I I mean I agree like it's I I mean I think about like when I was growing up watching nationwide races like watching Denny Carl uh KB all those guys race against Harvick race against like yeah. I don't know like Chris Buescher and um Bubba obviously Logano and like I think about now like I only get to race against Kyle you know five times this year yeah same yeah. with uh, with Ross or Seabell or whomever runs in the truck races. I I personally like racing against the Cup guys because it, I expect to get beat by them, and, so it makes me better. It makes it that much better. for like we, This was what we went through in 13 and 14. Or, yeah, 
uh, and you're going through it right now, you're running the same truck. It's your same, same stuff truck to Kyle, same stuff. And you beat him. You know what I mean? That, and that makes it sweeter for you. I mean, I know, and Bubba, like Bubba, will always go back and say the same thing about when we were running trucks. We were racing against Brad and Kyle almost weekly, it felt like, you know, and, and, and it makes you better. Like, if you, and it makes it more rewarding if you can beat them guys. You like, I know that how good these guys are, and we went out and beat them today. You know, even if it's not for a win, if it's fifth and sixth or whatever it is, you're still like, okay, well, yeah. I beat Kyle Bush today. I, I, I kind of like the limit, though, because these guys are just going to dominate. And it does give guys. True, like, like, there's an extent to it. Like, yeah. how many of them guys really are? around like Kyle that much in the truck race you know what I mean how many of them guys are really up there racing with Kyle maybe two you know what I'm saying like there's not a big group that actually gets to be in that position to race with Kyle for sure like most of them are in that group back there where they're four or five wide in the turn one most of the most laps and you don't you're not racing Kyle at that point you're doing the same thing you know you do normally so it's just another spot but if you know if you do have if you do get through that group and you break through and then, then you actually have a chance at winning. You know, you don't have the Kyle that's – I mean, let's be honest. Most of the truck races Kyle runs, he dominates. Like, Unless there's a pit so that, stop so I, Yeah, so I'll, I don't want to backstep, but I think – I wish it was more than five, but it yeah. may not be – like maybe just don't let him race in the playoffs. Yeah, but they, so they, yeah, they, they should have a chance race. to win. I want to see you win, but I mean – but this week, I mean, you had a good truck and things worked out and you did beat them guys. Um, but it won't be like that every week. No, it's going to be hard, like exactly. super hard. Yeah. I mean, I do think they're, I do like them being in it because I do think guys can learn from it, but most of them aren't learning anything from Kyle because only two or three of them probably race around him more than, you know, the whole race. Yeah, I just I think that I think that it also just brings attention. You know what I mean? Like if you've got Kyle Busch in the race, uh, there's people watching, watching because Kyle Busch yeah. in the race. There's sponsors coming in because yeah. Kyle Busch or Christopher Bell is in the race. You know, I think that, you know, I, I agree. I think it should be more. I think they definitely think they should not be able to race in the playoff. Like, the, the, I like the idea of no playoff races, no, you know, what is it? Like Dash, Dash for cash. Or like triple truck, or the triple yeah. truck challenge, whatever. Um, you know, stuff like that. So you get to make sure those guys win those races. But if you but, take away the playoff races, how many regular season races are there? Uh, I think there's I think there's more. There may be. Is there more playoff races this year? Because they added. So it's. Because we go to Martinsville again, or maybe yeah, because I think, it's, I think it's around. different for trucks. But I don't, I don't think I think it's the, it's the same, same number. Yeah, they just moved the races. But I think yeah. it's like probably was there twenty two races? Yeah, it's just over twenty three. So yeah. so then you're whatever. I think there's seven. Right, there's seven. Uh, I think there's seven play, uh, playoff races. So then you're looking at roughly fifteen ish races. Yeah. Well, then um, there's the trickle, triple triple truck challenge. Like there's ten. Like, I think cash. maybe like ten ten races. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. like, yeah. like they're not going to do plate races. No, no. Right. Yeah, <laughs> why? Like, those are so fun. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I would definitely sign up to run that Daytona race one all over again if I was one of those guys. <laughs> My goodness. One thing too about truck racing I've learned is like like I, I think about like the Thor Sport guys, right? Like all those guys are veterans, and so like. Like, I think about, again, Kansas last year and talking with Ty after the race about, like, what I need to not do in that situation again there or crafting or yeah. um, freezing. Like, those truck guys, like, they're really good about, like, letting us younger kids, like, no, I don't want to say kids I'm, I mean, I'm a grown man, but um, letting us know when we mess up. Yeah. Um, and then also, like, I think of – so I'm not sure if y'all saw Kyle's uh, post-race, but he talked about uh, – we, we – at Pocono last year, um, he doored me, and he, he told me why. I didn't, I didn't know until this weekend. I was like, well, if I don't have that conversation, I do the same thing on Friday night. And I'm like, well, why did he just drive into my door? I was like, well, maybe I don't do this on the second lap of the race. So I think that stuff's really valuable. And that's yeah. fair. And we've talked about this on the show too, but you've had experience both in the Xfinity Series and trucks. And – We've seen drivers like a Zane Smith going from trucks straight to cup. What I mean, do you see trucks providing more experience and Xfinity to prepare you for cup? I don't know. I th- I think that's too far for me to look at right now, to be honest. Um, I do think the Xfinity stuff, since, since I raced them when they had the skew rules and they took the skew out, I think they're a lot worse than dirty air. Um, you can still like change lanes behind people, which you can't do in a truck or it's really hard to do in the truck. And obviously in the cup stuff, if you try to roll to somebody's right rear, you will almost bust your butt. So, I mean, I don't know. I think the bottom line is you have to like run well and win in what you sit in, regardless if it's a truck, Xfinity car, Arca car. Um, I I don't really know. Like I, I think Jesse's going to do really good this year. Um, I think Zane's going to do well. I think obviously Carson's doing well too. Um, But I think the bottom line is if you're good, you will figure out how to make your, the stuff you're in go fast. It doesn't matter if you go straight to cup, 
if you jump a series, if you run all three. Um, it's all about timing too. Like yeah, what, timing. <clears throat> what seats open up, what, you know, there might be a better cup seat available for you than there is an Xfinity seat. Yeah. You know, or if there's a really good Xfinity car, you know, you get in that. You know, I, you got to, whatever you get in. You have to run good. The equipment, you know, the equipment. For what it was, is. Yeah, if you need to get in, like, the better equipment that you can get in, if you can get into an, you know, an A or B cup car, you probably get in it. You know, or do you go to a CX Xfinity car? I'm probably going to the A. You know, I, I just think it's all about timing, and you never know how it's going to work out. Fair. Well, moving on, uh, we did take a fan vote poll on the Dirty Mo Media social handle, and it seems like Bubba had the most votes for the best paint scheme in Vegas. So shout out to Bubba. Freddie, I know that was all you, so yeah. congratulations. I, I'm going to have to talk to uh, my friend Matt from Columbia now. He, uh, this is two races in a row with this black and gold car that have not gone well, so we might have to, Oof, might get have to, some new drip. Might have to switch some colors up or something. <laughs> the last time we ran the black and gold car was Kansas, and we cut a tire running second mm. and probably knocked us out of the playoffs. And then now, yesterday, we didn't obviously have it's any not good. luck. So I, I think it's honestly because you didn't cut your hair. No. Well, I Oof. mean, how could it be? I don't know. I'm sure the wind worked really well with that, too. You said you were rolling with it because of that, and it bit you. I know, but it's over. It's got to go tomorrow <laughs> as soon as I can get it. <laughs> we could do it right now. That's what I told Bubba. I was like, we should do shave it on the show. Right? No, we should shave it on the show. I'd be down for that. I am not. Nobody's cutting my hair here. Oh. <laughs> it's like uh, when you have a, uh, I'm sure you guys have out of the shot one. Uh, I forgot what her, her name is, but this really nice woman. She comes and cuts everybody's hair. And it's like, I'm, I'm not doing that. I have my own barber. <laughs> we used to do that back in the day when I, I mean, this is like 20 years ago when, when I worked in the shop, there was a woman that came to the shop yeah. and it was like 10 bucks or something. It was cheap too. And, yeah, Get she's the nicest lady. Yeah, ever. nicest oh, lady yeah. ever. Moving on to spot on, spot off. Which Raja, I think you listen to the show, so you probably understand yeah. a little bit. Okay, cool. Well, I'll start off with you. You will find victory lane again this season. Spot on, spot off. Um, I think if I just execute, I, I would hope so. Um, I, I know like Bristol, Darlington, Kansas tracks that I feel like I've got a good handle at. I know the, the trucks will have the speed. I just gotta put a whole race together. The 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 things that I will look for myself to improve the most on are at Coda and then Martinsville, Richmond, Milwaukee Gateway. Like those are kind of places I struggled at last year. Um, so that's where I'm looking at. Like I know I can go fast at the mile and a half. So like I, I feel like I have a good understanding for the aero balance and like changing lanes and and running in dirty air and stuff like that. But I think I need to be continue to get better on my short track stuff. So that's what I'm looking for. Like Bristol, like I said, I got a good handle on that place, but. It's also a concrete tra track, and you're, you're running qualifying laps every lap because the tire's so hard. Is so, Kyle running that Yeah, one? Kyle's running that race. <clears throat> He'll be tough to beat there. Yeah, ex exactly. So um, I'm just looking for myself to be better at, at Coda and, you know, Richmond, Martinsville, those places. Running second to Kyle at a place like Bristol, that would be like a win, though. For sure. No question. So No question. Coda, I mean, Coda's uh, different. Uh, that place, you just, just go, and there's so many opportunities to make mistakes there. Like, just take yourself out. Like, wheel hop. There's so I mean, many I did last year. And I, yeah. I screwed myself out of, a, I think, a tenth from just nuking my tires, you know? So Yeah, but if you go back to it now, you know, okay, well, I'm not going to wheel hop here. I'm not going to throttle up this hard here. Like, you, there's there's techniques that you know, but it's really hard to tell yourself to do that when you're racing. It's because you're racing. You right, know, and you're like, oh, I need yeah. this spot now. And it's like, yes. really? No, you don't. Yeah. You, don't. you can live for another quarter. Roger, going to win again, TJ? I think, I think, there, I think it will. I think the mile and a half will be a strength for him. And like he said, if he keeps racing, you keep racing, like there's probably going to be some tracks where you are the dominant truck. And that's going to be, that's the track that you need to back your pit road entry up a couple car lengths because you're, that's the, that's, you're going to have a lead. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be some opportunity, like it's going to be so inviting to go and do like, oh, I can do that. And then that's a track that you or time that you back it up a little bit. You don't push into the stall. You, you take it a little bit easier on everything. Um, but I do think, I do think Raja will win more this year. What about you, Freddie? Uh, yes, of course. You know, I, first of all, he's sitting next to me. I'm not going to talk. <laughs> shit about I him mean, it wouldn't be the here. first yeah. time. I'd reach over and smack pull Raja off your neck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I hadn't really, I had no doubt that he would get the victory lane at any point. You know, I've had multiple conversations with him about this. Like if you just continue to have clean races and the speed you have, you're going to win. And it's that, that doesn't change moving forward. You know, uh, obviously you got a very fast truck, very good team. I think they've won basically every truck. Yeah, race we've so swept far trucks this year. year so far. Um, so that's that's one in itself right there. And, and you, like you know, the race you got to improve on. And and there's you know, 
obviously that wasn't a dominant race the other night. You know, like you were. I think kind the ninety eight was yeah, the best truck. Yeah, like, but eventually that's going to turn around where you're going to be the dominant guy and something's going to happen and you got to take it with a grain of salt that you know all right this, I, so sometimes they come easier than hard you know whatever it is but as long as you continue to run clean races that's the, the biggest thing i've always preached to, to you or any young driver clean races gets it done that's what i told Derek Krause yesterday before his cup race i was like the best thing that can happen to you is nobody have any idea you're out there today he was annoying like, yesterday was we, had to, annoying? we had to balk this <laughs> out of a few times was he like Damn. racing you like yeah him. we had to balk him <laughs> And there is absolutely no way in hell that we were blocking getting passed by Derek House. What spot were you blocking for? <laughs> oh, it was 40th. No, it was, yeah, it was like 30th. It oh. was right around 30th. But, um, yeah, we, we, uh, we blocked the shit out of Derek a little bit yesterday. Yeah. And then um, we ended up getting better as the run went on. But then we, he started following us through. Like, he realized Brad was able to maneuver around and find, the, find some, you know, figure out how to make it work. And then Derek did a really good job of, taking advantage of that the guy that we were passing didn't lost his momentum because brad was getting on the outside of him they got pinned down and here comes Derek getting a free spot so he yeah. kind of figured out a way to yeah he did he, they they I, I think he's ended up like 28th maybe yeah um, but, he ran a good race and he did i thought i kept going down. i went down to joe white who was spotting for him and i said how's he doing he said man he's doing really good and he, the guys next to him were like man he's doing great you know yeah um and then you know they they ran long on that last, yeah, yeah. and it probably cost them a couple yeah, spots. But I mean, if, they, if a yellow comes out, they're heroes. Spot, you know, that's yeah. going to be probably a top fifteen run for him yeah. or something like nah, that. So he did a really good I job. Thought, I thought I thought that that's exactly what he needed out of that race was to you know just be quiet. But yeah, yeah go so go back to Raja. I think he's going to win. I think he's going to probably win multiple times this year. Um, no pressure. Um, but you just just like you keep doing, just clean races. Yeah, put yourself I think, in position. I think I still need to like I think about like Daytona. Right? I think last year for the most part I. I mean, I had a, a run in or two, but I felt like I wasn't terrible for, you know, having a bad rep among the field. And then I started the season with that, you know. So I definitely feel like I still got to, like, get a little bit rapport back, you know, amongst some of those guys. But, I mean, I can only do that. I can only c control my truck. Well, so. that's the biggest thing you see. And I, it goes back to Derek when Derek was running trucks. Like, oh, my gosh. You know, I said, I said we're, we're never going to be competitive because everybody's going to race us like an asshole because you – race them that way you know like you're over aggressive when you don't need to be and stuff like that and like i said the biggest thing we need to do like we we spent a whole year like just you just got to get respect back like just if you race these guys with respect they'll give it back and then we can move forward but it was felt like every week like he was running into somebody and whether it was intentional or not it didn't matter like it just looked bad and then you get yeah. that it's kind of like hosevar you know like hosevar has got a little bit of a reputation right now of being you know a bit of a wild card and and like you, until you get the respect back that people are going to make your life miserable out there for sure he, he still i mean <clears throat> i saw yesterday he was still super aggressive oh uh, time yes yeah i saw a couple like he's driving he's getting yeah. into the corner real deep yeah and like some guys like this just some of these guys aren't gonna be raced like that like that's not like it's not how you race them so not saying it's a wrong move yeah but it's just not somebody's gonna get tired of it sooner or later yeah shout out carson though he's he's helped me a lot this winter from like being the wise program and stuff yeah. like he ran he ran me a ton. i mean he was fast yesterday he does a good job of moving that's one thing he's very versatile like he knows how to find like he's not scared he's gonna to, make that thing go fast yeah no he's not what. scared to, to put it against the fence when other guys are like okay there's a 70 mile an hour wind here probably not gonna do it yet here's carson you know but yeah so he's i <clears throat> look for him uh, did i did i say he'd probably be i think i said he i think he'd be the best um car for them there this year yeah i don't remember and like Corey will be consistent but carson will have uh, i think i said Corey will be the b most consistent but carson will have higher high like, you know he'll be higher peaks, peaks and valleys yeah on a similar note spot on spot off a chevy driver will win this weekend's cup race at phoenix and just a quick note they've won all three in 2024 and swept Phoenix last season. Spot off. Go Toyota. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't. You want me to spot on that? <laughs> That's probably not going to happen. Spot uh, off. Spot Raja. off. Spot off. Oh, boy. <laughs> you can say well, you drive one. I mean, <laughs> I would love for Sherry to win, but the Fords have been kind of cracked at Phoenix like the last couple of years. So. What does that mean? I'm not. I'm cracked I'm, I'm is 41 like, years old. Now. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm we got this, this, this very, very good <laughs> OP overpowered. That's, uh, I saw you tweeted it. I saw, I saw you tweeted like feet old Phoenix was cracked. I was like, like cracked, like uh, fun, yeah, or like, very uh, fast, uh, okay, or okay. Yeah. we need like a. I need like a why don't you? Uh, I need a dictionary. Like for the why don't you tell Megan that? It's like, like, like um, hey, baby, yeah, you look you're, cracked you're, today. <laughs> no, that's not. That is not the correct that's use. Not, that's of, not the, a good use. Nah, I'm gonna make like a uh, like a one sheeter. Yeah, I need like, like a terminology. Yeah, terminology. 
Casey, you look cracked today. It's- <laughs> I do not co-sign that. Just letting the world know. I do not co-sign that. Is not the correct. Usage. That was on that waiver. Um, I, 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 just spot off. Yeah, spot, spot off. off. I, mean, I wonder. Um, I always wonder when a, a manufacturer does like new bodies and stuff. Um, when they build that spec, you know, because obviously year over year, right? They change spoilers, diffusers, the tire, etc. Um, I always wonder like how that much changes um, like the strength of the build, right? Because they build it for maybe how the car is right now, but then it won't be the same in six yeah. months. So, so I always wonder that. So it, it's, and I think you've seen a little bit of this yesterday. Um, obviously we have a new nose, uh, the Fords have new noses. Mm-hmm. Um, Chevy's are the same, you know, they, so they already know what to expect going there more so than, I mean, obviously Toyota and Ford can run a million Sims, but until you actually yeah. put the thing on the racetrack around other trucks, you don't really are around other cars. You don't really know yeah. exactly what you got. And the, the Chevy guys do, they know, like they went back there. I'm sure, you know, they had similar notes to what they dominated the last fall with. And that you've seen the same cars up front dominating. So it'd be interesting to see that it's, it was encouraging for me to see all the Toyotas up front for our season. Not all of um, them. Well, most of them, <laughs> well, the, ones, <laughs> the ones that weren't sitting on pit road. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, it's, uh, that's encouraging to me, like kind of out of the box to see that much speed at a, at a mile and a half, which is, dom- yeah. you know, kind of dominates our season. So, um, but yeah, like kind of similar. I, I expect Chevy to be good, but hopefully you we're can't take better. your same setup when you have a new car and yeah. expect it to just to plop right in and be the exact same. Cause there is different downforce. I mean, the front and rear. And so it's going to be a learning curve a little bit. I mean, I do think they'll get stronger. I think Fords and Toyotas will get stronger as we go. I noticed, and I, I mean, it could be complete coincidence, but it seemed to me like the Fords were good on long runs yesterday. So, like, we were the guys that were run. good. The guys that were good on long runs were typically the Fords. I noticed the 12 made a lot of move, progress. He was actually run. getting better as the race yeah. went on. Uh, like the it, 10 was another one, like long run he took off. Um, there's there's a couple Fords I realized that were, they were, they were making big gains at the end of runs. Did yeah. having practice or really a short practice this weekend help? Uh, I, no, I mean, it's... It, you're Doesn't not, help us. It, you're, I mean, you're not really... Like, the, the people... Yeah. The pe- like, Brett, and, like... I get it. You know, you want more practice, but you can't f-ing change anything. So yeah, it's I don't. like, you know what I mean? Like it takes, yeah. if you, you know, you can't, it's not like you're going to throw a whole new pack. You know, if you go out on load and it's not good, the time it's going to take you to throw a new package into there, you're pretty much using up the rest of your right. practice time. So like, I get it and it might improve the racing a little bit, but I, I just don't see it making a huge yeah, difference. I don't, I don't know if it's going to make the racing it, it, any, any, it's probably making it worse. I was going to say, That's so. I, I, yeah, cause the <laughs> good guys, the cars and teams with more resources are going to know how to Make fix their, their stuff that much yes, more better. Yes, and it's not going to get better. Now, I do agree with the more practice for the younger guys. Yeah. Like an Xfinity or maybe a truck or something like that. Maybe some of them guys could use a little bit more practice. I was so. talking about that yesterday with uh, David Green, former um, Bush David. Series 1995 Bush Series champion. Um, his son, Austin, is running some Trans Am races. But they're, I risk against him in a legend car this yeah. year. He kicked my he's, ass. I don't know what happened to him. He, he, I don't know. He, he's shot up. He's like seven feet tall now. I don't know what happened, Whoa. what David's been feeding him. Um, but I was talking to him yesterday because he's going to make some Xfinity starts this year at, at some of the road courses. And you think about that, like somebody that's never been in a in an Xfinity car before. Yeah, you're gonna go to I assume maybe Coda or somewhere Chicago. I don't know, and run 20 minutes of practice, <laughs> and then yeah. that's it. And like and that so at, at at a place like Coda, that's like seven laps, yeah. probably eight laps, yeah, even about, <laughs> probably 80 hours of sim. But, yeah. Um, um, yeah. And then and if you, God forbid, you have a problem, you know, like if something like this is a new team, who knows what the car build's going to look like. Oh, yeah. You know, so you have any issue now, you, you basically have no practice. So yeah. I, I don't know how you remedy that. But the idea that like practice is going to fix everything, I don't really, I don't, I'm not buying into that much. Yeah, I think as a driver, low, a short amount of practice is kind of fun because you're just like, oh, uh, like everybody's in the same boat, like figure it out, you know, even yeah. unless like your stuff is like, oh, well, I'm going to be out to lunch here. <laughs> but um, I think... You think about like mid Ohio, right? You go and um, you'll have, you'll do maybe 10 laps and you go and qualify. I think that's kind of cool because every, like I said, everybody's in the same boat. Um, I think the idea of having a, like a, a warm up session, uh, because like, I mean, I think about the COVID races, right? Like you won't have a mis- an opportunity for like, I don't want to say dumb, but like not good, like oversights, whether it's like, I don't know, getting some stuck in your throttle body or, I don't know, like tungsten coming out, yeah. right? Like anything, st- anything, literally. Anything. So I think yeah. practice is a necessity, but we don't need to like when I grew up watching like happy hour on Friday, like three 
practice through the weekend. I don't think there's a need for that, right? It's expensive. It uses resources, but I think like there's still, uh, even if you make the practice 30 minutes, right? You, like you said, Freddie, you can't, you know, you don't yeah. be changing springs, right? You can't scale the thing, but maybe you can try, you know, different shocks or yeah. um, stuff like that. I think with a longer practice, you know, like just 30, add 10 minutes, like 30 to an hour, at least you could send your driver out there. Like, you know, in Austin, he's going to go out there. At least you can just, hey, go run. You know what I mean? We yeah, don't got, laps. yeah, you don't got 15 minutes here. We got 45 minutes, whatever. Go run for a bit. Come in after you're done. You know, come in, you know, when you feel like you got a good handle on it. Um, now, you don't, you just don't get that opportunity. Yeah. One so, set of tires, like, that's yeah. it. I, I almost feel like practice should be enough for two sets of tires. Right. One to start on, and then one, you know, you go run enough where you get a feel for it, then let him go out there and make a sticker run because that's, there's such a big difference in grip level, I think so, like a road course, mm -hmm. then old tires and new tires. That gives them an opportunity to go out there and actually make a mock run or a Q run to get a feel for it. So I think it would maybe level the playing field a little bit in the lower series, but not in the cup series. I don't think it's going to yeah. make it. I think it's going to make the racing worse. Yeah, we saw it at Martinsville. You know, you, like we went and tested Martinsville, and all we did was – get closer you know what i mean like did we just yeah we shrank the box to what yeah. you know the lap time difference from first to 20th or whatever they figure it out yeah get ready north carolina fan duel america's number one sports book is launching soon and just in time for the biggest college basketball tournament of the year right now you can get a hundred dollars in bonus bets just for signing up before march 11th just go to fanduel.com slash dbc and join today then you'll be set to bet when fanduel is officially live Soon, you'll finally be able to bet on all your favorite teams and all your favorite sports. From parlays to prop bets and boxing to basketball, FanDuel has it all. So head to FanDuel.com slash DBC to sign up and lock in $100 in bonus bets now. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Availability subject to regulatory approval. 21 plus and present in NC. Bonuses are issued in non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire 30 days after FanDuel accepts its first real money sports wager in NC. Unique user identity verification required. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Kyle Busch was a bad pit stop away from winning at Las Vegas. Do you agree? Which race? <laughs> yeah, that I could guess. be said for two races. <laughs> yeah, his, his whole weekend. Well, you yeah. actually, if I looked, if I saw right, you cycled out in front of Kyle. Yeah, but I looked, I saw this little, uh, I think it was one of Trey Ryan's uh, stats, and like our, I was like fifth for my pit road stuff, and KB was first. I was like two seconds lower as a whole. <laughs> yeah, he's but pretty, that includes pit stop, that. entry, yeah. rolling time, and then exit. Um, but yeah, I but think it which was which penalty to get in the truck race? He got, it, was, it was a uh, safety, a safe, safety, yeah, a safety yeah. violation or something. So it might have, that's probably what's maybe yeah. slow to stop down. But I think he pit outside the box. Oh, something. he did pit outside the box yesterday. Yeah, so slid. I seen yeah. slide just barely out the front. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. I, again, I think Larson, Larson and Reddick were the two best cars. Larson, man, I thought Larson like Larson's mo kind of has been dominate and then possibly give it away late yeah. on either and it's been i thought we were racing. seeing that yesterday again yeah. like he was i mean the beginning of the race i'm like we're never catching this guy and then at like the end of every stage reddick would be there like or we'd be still be catching him and then i saw i was watching and like my the my the my favorite part of the whole race yesterday was when we got to tandem with reddick trying to push that him was up. actually kind of cool that and i cool. thought i thought I, I was laughing the whole time because i'm like i can't imagine <laughs> i know everybody's mad MF people are gonna be <laughs> <laughs> I saw this. <that. laughs> um, and then, like, it was so funny. So we got, it like, worked. It yeah, was working. I mean, it was working. We knew it was going to work. We tried it last year at, at uh, Kansas when he won. We were trying to push him up. He was second. And they, they ended up getting a caution. And he won the race. But uh, he was a little sketched out about doing it there. Like, it, so this time, uh, we just didn't make a choice. We just got behind him and started pushing because we had fresher rubber. Um, and it was funny because we – uh, Bubba, like you know, just making sure, and he wanted to do, Bubba wanted to do it again. Bubba was like, yeah. "Well, because we, we we had fresher rubber, so we could stay with that. Like, obviously, their car was much better than ours, but then like because of the rubber, we like we could stay there and just push and push and push. And I think we got like we yeah. went from like two and a half seconds back to like less than a half a second. I was about back. to say like within. Four and I really seconds. just I didn't care what happened. I just wanted to push him to the lead, and then like go whatever happens. Yeah, I know been, I know the internet would have exploded. Yeah, oh my gosh! Um, but uh, so then you know. We come out and we, we pit with him so that we can come out again with him. And he was obviously better. So he's driving away from us. Now. Yeah. And then uh, Bubba's like, 
Like once the pace calls off, put tires on this thing. I'll go back out there and do it again. <laughs> and they're like, ah, we don't think we need to do that. No, I don't think that's <laughs> a good idea. Incoming penalty on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I think um, honestly, I think I think Tyler messed up coming to the uh, with two to go or whatever. Uh, so yeah. I, it's funny you say that. So I, I'm like, man, because it. Because obviously Kyle's going to take away the top like as soon 100%. as he gets there, right? And I saw like he got a really good run off the two one time. Like he's showing his headlight, so I'm like in my mind, I'm like I do that same thing of like peeking your headlight of making you think I'm a bite to the bottom and just go to the fence. And then I think Kyle already knew that and he just took the the top. Away. I think yeah. Tyler should have gave up more early because he knew like at the front front half of the run. You mean? Yeah, like right at the end of the backstretch. You know, or oh, like that, that, that <clears> lap, that lap. Like you know, if you go up, he's driving off of you. And you're going to get to him in the middle. That's his. He wants you to get to him at that point because if he, that kills your whole run for the straightaway, and really the next lap. And it, like I don't think he really got back that close to him. So I think if you like Tyler got a really good run off of two, and he got down the back. And I think you know it was if he ran the top, that was perfect scenario for Larson. He knew he could run him up until he just stopped him. Yeah. And I think if Tyler backs his entry up and still. You know, has he his gives, headlight out. You mean? Yeah. Well, just backs his entry up, makes the gap with the air, like gives him a couple car lengths, and then he can throttle back up. And then there, guys were like, we could do that and turn down. So at that point, you're turning down with momentum. At least maybe then you can get to one of the sides or the other and make a move on him. But gotcha. if you run up on him in the middle of the corner, he's that's what he wants. That's what he wanted to have happen. And I, I think Tyler played right into the right into that right into that and. Um, I mean, Kyle's literally going through the corner looking looking at that wherever that little screen is. Oh, Dude, it's just like the iris one. It's so easy. It's, yeah. it's literally <laughs> like a He's literally jump. just opening the wheel up as wherever Tyler's at. He's just doing that. And he yeah. knows once you get in that wake right there, you get close, you're done. And he said it after the race. He said, I just aero blocked. He's like, I'm looking in the mirror 50% of that lap. You know, like just yeah. that's, that's all you're doing. And that's all yeah. it takes with these cars. But I just think Tyler, you know, you he needed to build a run to get to one side or the other. And that was – you know, that was all, I mean, that was it right there. I know Tyler's really good at running the fence, but Larson's also really good at, yeah. you know, them, these guys, in, I mean, the guys in the Cup Series are good. Well, that's what I was going to say, too. So they were, I feel like they both were, like, top of the game, right? Yeah. But I think you can take, like, t if you take 20 random guys in Cup, if you give them something, they can run the fence and do it really well. Oh, yeah. You better. Right. You better to be say. able to do Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. So I, I was wondering, like, you mentioned that, I, I guess it was, what, four, three to go, and he had the runoff to him, like, I don't know what you do here, right? Because you can't go to the top because he's obviously going to take it away. And you're not close enough to try to bomb it on the bottom, right? Because he can just, like, take it away from you or will chase you if you try to, like, slide him. So I don't, I don't know. How but, do you – well, you got to uh, look at it like the back stretch of Atlanta in the truck race. You know, with Bailey, we're riding there, running pretty good. We're top five. <clears throat> and I'm halfway down the back. I'm like, hey, you know, we don't have any real pressure. The guy's three or four off. You give yourself a little bit right here. And that way, when you get to the corner, you can stay wide open, and then they get side, with, side by side or something. You can good. play offense. You don't, because everyone drives into the corner right on each other, does that lift right on the entry, and then everybody's jammed up. So we were giving it early, and then we could stay in the throttle more, and they have a little bit of a run. You can play offense if you want. You don't have yeah. to take the run if you want, but if the right scenario opens up, you can go. So I just think, that, you know, there's different ways to look at it. Maybe Tyler dives at the bottom. Maybe, maybe he can. Maybe yeah. get him. I don't know. I think, I think you're just guessing at that point. You know, like you're oh. just. It's like it's it's. You, Tyler knew he caught. I mean, he caught him running the top. So I think yeah. he would like to run the top. But like Raj, I said, you got to know or be prepared that he's getting ready to take that away. From one block. Him. Yeah, that's all it's it takes over. right there. Yeah, yeah. one yeah. block. All your I'm, momentum's done, and it's over. Yes, and it's doing a lot to come to two to go or coming to the white, whatever it was. That's why I think rebuild it. You need to catch him on the straightaway. You know what I mean? You need to yeah. you need to time your to runs. Like get the, there. You need honestly. to time your runs in the straightaway. The corner. You're done. But he's just going to take it away. That's what's so hard, too, is, like, you run the guy down, run on the fence. I'm like, oh, this is so know, much fun. Yeah. Like, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting yeah, there. I'm like, then he, then I'm here. I'm like, oh, I, I can't go nowhere. You know what's no. even more fun is when you run a 30th and you run a guy down doing it that's been running the bottom, and he tries to do it for the first time, three <laughs> crawlies in front of you, and he's, like, a half, he's like that, almost a second off, and it's like, really? Is that why Brad flipped Josh off? Or was that, was that? No, <laughs> it, was, reason? it was for other reasons. Similar, but not. <laughs> just, Yeah. Well, I don't know if we right, talk Casey. about that. <laughs> oh, spot on, spot off. Spire Motorsports will win a cup race this season. I know we've alluded Raja, to. Raja, I dare you to say spot off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your take, Raja? You could have my you could have my spot time here too. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I mean, honestly, so I, I've been going to Spire since like December first, right? And I didn't even know if I was going to be able to race full time, part time there at all because like we didn't know like 
what the sponsorship was going to be or anything. And honestly, the only reason why I'm on the truck is because of Mr. H and Hendrick Cars. So um, going there, you know, showing up every day, it's been crazy because they've had to do so much. Like uh, the decal guys, guys and gals, the PR department, marketing department, legal department, like they've been working so hard, not to mention like the guys in the shop. And um, like they've had so much to do, like they moved the fab shop down the street. Um, or I guess that would be the chest. It's a lot going on. A lot, lot going on, right? But one thing that's been really good is like everybody's pulling in the same direction and like our leadership is really good about making sure like we're all teammates. It doesn't matter if we're truck or cup. So I think for that reason, like obviously, you know, we're not, we're not a Hendrick, we're not a Gibbs, but I think we can be that one day um, because everybody, like I said, is pulling in the right direction. So you're going spot off. <laughs> yeah, bro, of course, dude. That's what I just heard. <laughs> yeah, spot off. Uh, or spot on, they will win a race. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're That's spot on. Yeah, I, I, I don't – I I think I'm spot off on it still, um, unless there's a, you know, obviously plate races. A plate race could happen, but I don't I, – I don't think they're there yet. A, pl- a plate race could easily happen. Yeah. And like we just talked about, they were fast. Corey – Corey used pitch sparks, used good pitch strategy at Corey track position, and Corey maintained it. Corey was in the top mm-hmm. five. Every you know, we were back. I don't even know where we were mid pack, and I looked up, and Corey was in the top five or top seven. Like he he had speedy. Like I saw him get up there, and I'm like, ooh, this might be tough to maintain. Yeah. And like a lot of the guys that took two that that run fell off, and he didn't. Like he maintained yeah. it. And then you know, host of was pretty good. Zane obviously had problems early, so he didn't really get to see much out of him. But like we talked about earlier, running fifth is one thing. Winning. I mean, when you we talk about how much it is to go from fifteenth to twelfth, yeah. going from fifth to third is like a monumental step. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. it, it, it takes a lot. It's good to have speed, but you're going to have to step it up a lot to you know to to win a race. And I, I don't think they're there yet. They're they've definitely taken steps in the right direction. Mm-hmm. That the seventy seven car you know is much more competitive than it was in the past. Um, obviously, they put a lot of time, they put a lot of money, they put a lot of resources into to making their entire program better. You know, they 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 obviously got the truck stuff figured out first right out the gate. They've won all the races. Well, they should have that figured out. They, yeah, they, they inherited. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, an organization um, was already a winning organization. But so. you know, but still, it's a, it, it doesn't mean anything. You know, I mean, you still got to have the right people in place, and just because the trucks are fast, I mean, you're automatically going to win. Yeah. Um. So so they got that figured out. They come out. You know, they show speed at the first. You know, real. You know, mile and a half race of the year. Hopefully, they can build on that. I just, I just not ready to say they're going to go out. What and I race think yet. would really help them, and is at the plate races, and I don't know if I've seen it yet. Is you get them guys all three, and maybe the maybe the circumstances haven't worked out quite yet, but they need to find each other and show that they're going to be with each other. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think you know, you'll like, see that at Talladega for sure. Yeah, like you see Chris and Brad. When you see those two together, you know they're going to work with each other. Yeah, you know they need to have some sort of system like that, which. I think could be trying at times because I don't think Carson likes to run second. No. And I don't think Corey likes to run second. So no. you're going to, you know what I'm saying here. Yeah. So it's going to, it could be interesting, but they, I do think they could, they could find the victory lane at, at a super speedway, but I'm um, spot off. Raja, you mentioned um, not knowing what the season would look like and how involved and how much Mr. H really helped you. What, what did that look like? How did he help you? So I guess we'll, we'll, I'll backtrack. So I met him for the first time, the 500 in 2020. Um, I do not think he remembers that. <laughs> I met him in check that day. They, they do not remember. There's no way. Um, but actually, we, we met last year. Um, the conversation kind of started. We had a, a, well, our partnership with Sunoco for their 20-year anniversary. They, you know, they, we wanted to do a race and stuff. And so through Chevy, they kind of connected us all. And, and they were honestly really interested. And I was surprised like they I mean I haven't really done much this year like why me you know um but they gave me the opportunity there at Phoenix and and it just I, I guess obviously finished 14th but I, I felt like I was going to finish eighth so a, a decent day I think for that car not running on ovals that much um but I think they just I guess have believed in me and and originally they were only going to do part of my season but um getting to know obviously Mr. H Miss Linda and everybody at Hendrick, but also their automotive group, like Jeff, uh, uh, Daryl, Chase, um, and they just, they wanted to support me, you know? So it's, it's been pretty special just because like, they don't do that for anybody, right? Like very, very few, let alone like, a young guy like myself. So I feel pretty, pretty grateful about yeah, it. Yeah, you're in a good situation. Let's move on to Reaction Theater.
Door bumper clear. Casey, TJ, Brett, Freddie. <laughs> Damn, I love you, Hillbilly. <laughs> this is Michael. You got the best podcast out there, some. I can't fucking stand Logano's smug ass attitude. I'll see y'all in Darlington. I'll see y'all in Martinsville Fall. I gotta go. Stir my meatballs. Love you. Meatballs. <laughs> gotta go stir my meatballs. <laughs> That's a t shirt. Uh, Where do y'all think that guy is from? Uh, We're in the southeast well, United Darlington. States. Wait, why makes you think he's from oh, South? South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> love love Timminsville. Grew up a lot of racing at Florence a lot. Oh boy. We love you. Thank you for being yeah. a great friend. I'll see yeah. those tracks. Come say I'll hi. probably see you at Florence later this year too. Oh, I'm sure. I'll be getting custom gift a late model race or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for a gift card. <laughs> well, guys, I'm door bumper clear. Listen to y'all show for a long time. Hey, wait, this is my homie Jordan, I think. I just want to give the biggest congratulations to my little brother, Rob. Oh, yeah, this is my homie Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First career win in the truck series. Oh, that's cool. I know he's come up short a few times. He's probably made a couple mistakes. And I know I've always, I've always been one of the ones that's kept his head up through the good times, the hard times, and sometimes the ugly times, but... Never left his back, never left his side, and just wanted to keep congratulating him and hoping that he, he you know, get stay, stay consistent and get a couple more wins for the playoff start and then show him what he's really made of. And also, the most important thing that I'm calling for Uh-oh. Uh-oh. is Freddie. I mm. remember on Twitter, Raj asked to be on the show, and he Uh-oh. said that he had to do something, which was win. Well, he's done that, so... Let's get him on the show, please. Well, yeah, you're calling in. Here he is. He, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he probably called before we announced it. Probably. <laughs> what yeah. did you think he was gonna say? You said, bro. Uh-oh. So he te- so we was on Irish last night, and he texted me. He's like, oh yeah, they made. Uh, I, I did a little call, and I was like, uh oh. <laughs> Hopefully, he doesn't expose me. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've been playing Irish for years, so yeah. That, Who's that's that, my bro? My friend Jordan Haynes. Hmm. I don't know. TJ, I probably TJ's wrecked. probably wrecked him. I probably Irene. wrecked him. <laughs> Rajas probably wrecked me. I was about so. to say I got a yeah. I've, I've got given a, I've got a big list on the game. I've had to <laughs> slow Raja down sometimes on iRacing. Definitely, definitely. I mean, everybody's talking about NASCAR is better than F1. And then after this weekend, I mean, Kyle Larson looked like Max Verstappen out there winning all those stages. How are you supposed to keep the fans entertained? Max Verstappen. Just kidding. F1 sucks. NASCAR is lit. As Clint Boyer would say, I mean, Did he heck, actually say Young that? Money yes. had more people come to the start Lord. finish line than Carlos Sainz had to celebrate a podium. <laughs> podium, go Willie B. That's crazy. He so I don't know if that was like a, a directive from Fox, but so I, I heard, know what it was. Clint said lit. Is there a joke behind it or something like? So Clint said Did he organically Clint say that. Clint said lit. The race was lit. Uh, Kevin. On the parade laps was like on our on our radio. He talked yes. to Bubba, and he said, "Your paint scheme looks lit today, Bubba. Floor it. You're yeah, too old nah, to be bro, saying it. Bubba, no you're way. too old to be saying it. Yeah. No way. I, that was that's flew with Kevin plant stuff. last night, and he mentioned that. So I'll tell you later. I don't. Oh, I don't oh, okay. yeah. So what? On that note, you know, Max obviously is. You can't catch him in F twenty three seconds. Kyle yeah. Larson second win. Second yeah, lap. Well, I mean this guy was kidding, but you know, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's uh, I did see a funny meme or whatever you want to call it that uh, it was a picture of Max winning and it, and it was you know that and with that the twenty twenty four season is <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. like that con- whatever then people put yeah, it in the, the year that, I <laughs> see that after qualifying it was like oh it was after qualifying that's right he's on the pole yeah. and that concludes your twenty twenty four season that's really funny uh, but I mean. The fact that Larson obviously dominated yesterday's race and there is comparison like, oh, Larson. Uh, and there, there's no, I feel like that's not even accurate considering no. he, it's not like he's won every race this season. Well, no. And Larson, I mean, Larson, dom- for, for NASCAR terms, Larson dominated yesterday's race. But it was it still was, a race. Yeah, like at the end of the still, race. Yeah. And like at, the yeah. end of, at the end of both stages and at the end of the race, he had to hold off Tyler Reddick. Verstappen never saw anybody after they turned the lights off. <laughs> like, I don't think Verstappen <laughs> saw anybody after the qualifying. I sure mean, no. sandbagging and testing and practice. And oh, then, that's the yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was still, I mean, it was a good race. I mean, it wasn't Atlanta. Well, yeah. back to the real tracks here. But, you know, I don't um, – it was still a good race. It was hard. I mean, there was a lot of handling issues. Vegas is a tough track. I, I hate when people compare F1 and NASCAR. Like, it's, it's – yeah. they're two motorsports, right? But they're, they're just, like, so different. Like, I don't think it's, 
It does. It doesn't do either one. Justice. I think the F one is more along the lines of appreciating these guys building that car because there's no. I mean, listen, it's the rule book in Formula One is wide open. They yeah. develop a new car every year. Yeah. And, and change it in the middle of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and change the middle of the year. Some of them throw away, you know, in the middle of the year and start working on the next year. You know, so yeah. and it's a whole different ball game there. It's not even not even close. Right. First non plate track, I still call it a plate track, sorry. Of the year. Probably had a really solid late uh, race. Finish was uh, really entertaining. Lots of people making mistakes, lots of uh woes on pit road. Raja, awesome job. Look forward to watching you the rest of your career. Holla. Hey, thanks. Listen, we don't need any sensible callers like that. Yeah, why do you think that that was too What's that guy's problem? I mean, that guy, I mean, he's just going to call in. Block that number. That guy's going to call in and be positive? What's his problem? (laughs) Wrong show. Yeah, why? (laughs) Just give him DJ D Reload his number. They're friendly on that show. We don't like it. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Hey, DBC guys. We just got through watching Las Vegas. We just wanted to say that. That Ross Chastain coming back from uh, being down a lap to finish in fourth was awesome. Yep. But the race is kind of boring. Very boring. That but that's all right because Ch- Ross is going to hang out with us along with Kid Rock at Talladega Super Speedway mm-hmm. in the spring race. So we've got something to look forward to other than this boring race that we just had here at Vegas. Um, we, need, we need some more uh, plate races. Jeez, like oh, what we had at hang up on Atlanta this guy. <laughs> and Daytona. That's what Good we're looking Lord. forward to. Let's go, Daga! <laughs> so here we go, guys. Just going to give you the invite to hang out with us in North Park and Daga. You'll, <laughs> you'll freaking find us, boys. Yeah. Guaranteed. We're, we're we'll find it. I, don't think, I don't think they've had any beer. So no. <laughs> average Alabama citizen. Just this kidding. Is, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This I'm kidding. is the problem with Atlanta. Now everybody wants that yeah. every single and they don't want it. They think they yeah. want it. It's just like yes. everything else. Like you get a little bit of something that's great and you think you want it every week and if we did it every week, you'd find something to complain about. Like it's it, just it wouldn't be it wouldn't be And I'm not spotting same. that shit every week. Good lord. <laughs> hey, I did see some guys in the in the lobby walking out of the hotel that were uh dressed I mean, they were from the Talladega infield, basically. I mean, <laughs> overalls that were, you know, USA and they actually uh, they stopped me. And uh, they were having a good time. That's so good. shout out to them Everybody's guys. Like, for it's fun to have fun. I yeah. wonder, um, as Atlanta ages, if they'll like move the lines to widen it out and when they'll open the motors back up. Mm. Yeah. Nah, we'll seal it. I, yeah, I think, <laughs> oh, gonna, we'll seal it. I think they're going to do something to make the track race that way forever. Oh, uh, damn. Yeah. It might be fun when it wears out, though. Yeah. Like, so I know they sealed Richmond like back in the day. They haven't done that recently, have they? No? I don't think so. No. Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Chad, first time caller, long time listener. Big Brad fan, wanted to say good job, guys, and good job, DJ, for, you know, come back. Although we almost ended up looking like the idiot of the weeks. During, I believe it was the first green flag of pit stops, I believe you called him clear, and he moved up the track, and almost the 47 almost took us out. I don't know if that was your fault or his fault, but whatever. We got away with it, and, um, yeah, good job, guys. <laughs> nope. What'd you do? No, literally... <clears throat> He hit that deal over there and started sliding oh. up off the apron. And I'm not. No, you don't clear a guy up at that point. There's, oh, this is leaving for the road. Oh, yeah. And the oh. 47's coming outside right as he hits it, too. And the 47 had to move off the racetrack. And uh, it, got, it got really it close. Sketchy. Yeah, it was sketchy. And then um, t- to make it known in typical 47 car fashion, next time you know we got back to him, we were passing. He run us all, runs us all the way to the inside wall in the turn three. Um and then again, at later on, we're passing him, and he just packs her in the left rear and just drives us up the track off of two. Like, but you know, I don't. Are you think saying he, Ricky's not nice? I mean, I think every driver's made mistakes out there, and I don't think his, I don't think his sheets. <laughs> I think his sheets pretty it's long. Not clean. No, I mean it's not like it, nothing happened from it. Yeah, was it sketchy and scary? Yeah, I would about close my eyes. So, um, but yeah, that's one thing that's uh, it's kind of a a gray area for like the pit exit lines because you I mean I look at the cup guys on boards right like some guys will they won't pull up in the middle of the corner right but they'll be merging before the hash mark so that's like hopefully now obviously watch like did you did you do did you have yeah I'm sure you had yellow flag pit stop the other night right did you, yeah did you notice the line was painted they changed it up? yeah they so I was like wait it's over. I go and follow the, the black one I'm like 
Like, yeah. That's the, 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 like guys were like, because you can't see, right? You know, you're kind of up dark, each other's you can't ass, tell, you can't yeah. see anything. And then like the line would lead you into the grass. Right. Like, so guys were like two wheels into the grass. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't read <laughs> Seth's email, but uh, I was following Ty and I'm like, wait, this looks kind of far. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, was a little weird. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise, yeah. Oh, thanks to everyone for calling in. Don't forget, 704-802-9572 is our Reaction Theater number. Call us. Send us your thoughts. We'll keep picking the best ones each week. Moving on to hashtag AskDBC. You can also send us your questions on Twitter, X, whatever it's called these days. Hashtag AskDBC. This first one is from Jordan. With Raja winning Friday night, Max Verstappen being an avid sim racer, and even William Byron coming from the sim world, will we see more top sim racers and get opportunities? Do you think this is your buddy Jordan again? Is no, gonna, it can't be. It can't <laughs> be. I was going to say, I think he wants a ride. Like, I know. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, he didn't tag Dale Jr., though, so I doubt it. Most of them tagged Dale Jr. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I hope so, right? I mean, I feel like that's one of the beautiful things about sim racing is that, like, I was, I'm, I'm a city kid, right? Like, I didn't grow up going to the racetrack. I didn't have family or anything doing this. So um, that's one of the great things about it is that that got me in the door, right? I'm not, like, very few people get to drive race cars, and I'm, I'm very lucky that I get to do so, right? But... I think it's a blessing because there's so many people that can get engineering jobs. Like you look at uh, Keegan Leahy, right? He works at 2311. Eric J. Smith, I'm pretty sure he works there too, right? You have guys that get to the top of the sim racing level and can go work anywhere, whether it be in NASCAR, overseas. I don't know that much about sports car racing or, or IndyCar and stuff like that. But I think for sure the top sim racers should and will get more opportunities. It's just hard, like, because there's so few drivers. Yeah, and I, th and I think, like, it. you got to be careful with it because, like, okay, yes, William and Raja, these guys kind of started out sim racing, but they still had to get in race well, cars and do yeah. something. You know, like, they didn't just go, all right, you guys go to the Bush Series. Like, William is a very accomplished legend car racer. Raja went straight to legend cars. You know, like, they still had to start at the, you know, yeah. kind of the bottom and work their way up. It wasn't like... It's not they a guaranteed path. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. Like, there's guys on there that, you know, you see that try it and they don't make it. So, it's it's the same thing. Like I, I do think, a, but you see, as many, you see as many guys in real life try real racing and don't yeah. make oh, it yeah. either way. Oh, yeah. So... I definitely think it opens the door a lot more. I mean, obviously, there's more notoriety to it as we go on with William winning and, and you winning and, you know, these other guys, like you said, are getting jobs in it. And not that that's going to lead them into a driving role at any point, but it's definitely opening the door for, you know, a lot of kids from coming from there. And, and you never know, man. It's all, like we talked about earlier, timing. If something times yeah. out right and – you know, you meet somebody at the right time or some doors open and, you know, you're you're present, you get an opportunity. But I do think there's more. I do think people are looking at it more and more as a tool to, to you know, educate yourself with racing and, and get better. Mm -hmm. Literally, like if I've if I'm off by a year, either too early or too late, there's no way I'm here because yeah. they did. Yeah. I did the Ignite series in, in 18. If I was a year early, they don't have that. If I do it in 19, like it's COVID. So it's like, yeah, yeah. Um, Fair. Got very fortunate. We got rain coming on Tuesday, so I'll slow your ass down. I'll get to you. It's not on NASCAR stuff, unfortunately. That's I'm fine. Play it. What? <laughs> oh, we can run some sports car right, stuff. Deal, deal. We fun. do have a lot of iRacing players who listen to the show, as I know, because I got 20 million tags I probably, about. I probably players. wrecked a couple. About Millbridge oh, you going on a couple of I racing. <laughs> what, that is cool. That's cool. What is uh you know what oh advice would you give? I had to say it. Sorry, TJ. Casey's been waiting for this. I racing in Millbridge. Millbridge. What Millbridge. advice Millbridge, would you man. give someone who you know maybe wants to be in your position one day? Um, I mean, you just got to do the work, and I'm not saying that means it's gonna um work out for you, you know, but do the do the little things. Show up early, be there late, um, and then just pay attention, right? Like, look at the other guys that have that have, guys and gals that have made it to where you want to go. Because I don't think it applies just to racing, um, and just just care. And if you care enough about the thing, like you're gonna do, like all the other stuff will come easy. Like, I don't want to say it's not anything special, right? But I just I care about this stuff a lot. Like I watch racing all the time. Like it's it's really all that I do. Um, so I mean, that's that's really it. Like anybody can do this stuff. Like there's nothing like special about me. Like I just got very fortunate with timing and 
with opportunities that presented themselves to me and, and I tried my best to make the most of them. So that's really it. It's funny you say Millbridge. I see one of the question is, what's the hardest city you've taken in the car? <laughs> one of them was at Millbridge. I flipped last year before I uh, Martinsville. <laughs> Ow. I think I remember that. Yeah, that was, was that I, your last trip to Millbridge. That or? was the last time I've raced. <laughs> <laughs> I want to race again this year, but I'm like, uh, like that, that micro stuff has helped me a lot, but that, that hurt, that hurt a lot. Uh, yeah. And it was, like a, it hurts. And it was a non-wing too. So you didn't have the wing to, no, to crush oh, it. Yeah. No, 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 yeah, that, was, shock. yeah. That, that did not feel good. This next one is from Blair. What's the most obscure thing you've had to autograph and have you had to autograph a baby's head yet? Well, at Pocono a couple years ago, I signed somebody's like beer flab. Oh, why, why, Freddie's had to sign a few I mean, of those. That guy's sitting right I mean, here. Why are you calling him out? Who said I was calling him out? I asked you to do one thing one time, and you want to put it on me on blast. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie uh, actually prefers the lower back tattoos, so uh, we know it's not him. <laughs> yeah, so that was kind of crazy. A little bit lower, as we recently learned. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> yeah. Did you know about that? No. Oh, you didn't tell him about your tattoos? Oh, he's probably not going to show him. Well, I, 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 I got it for Raja. Raja ran no. a seven last year a couple times. He went to Let's, Key West and got it. You don't want to see shit. it. He went um, to Key West and drank the Kool-Aid. And I sat with, uh, <laughs> did you sign the kid Allen, you know, big DVC fan, Allen, uh, Bedgood? Um, did you sign his arm? Like, wasn't when? This weekend? This is, no, this is years ago. Yeah, oh, yeah. And he's got, a, he's oh, got yeah. us all tattooed yeah. on his He's like, hey, sign my yeah. arm. And I was like. Did he actually oh. get that tattooed on his Yeah. He's got like know. a sleeve of tattoos. Like it's like I think me, Brett, and TJ are on there. I, I remember Logano was on there. He's got a he's got like a bunch. I mean, of respect them. NASCAR. We have the best fans in oh all sports, no question. But I told me he's crazy. I'm, I'm going to say like having a, another girl man <laughs> signature on my body for the rest of my People, life. That's kind of crazy. I see cra- like tattoos. Some of the Bubba fans too are wild. They I seen one guy like me and Bubba will always say the same thing pre race. Like I'll say so like let's go to work and he'll respond yes sir. So pe- I, I've seen two people have that tattooed like on their leg, just in quotes like that quote. I'm like, wow, appreciate it, love the support, yeah. but good my gracious, I can't believe you did that. that I mean, Hamlet, Hamlet's got like a sleeve now. Yeah, I see that. I thought it was yeah. fake. <clears throat> no, so man. I, so oh, he, Kevin, Kevin. Oh, yeah. I saw that last time. I'm like, yo, I didn't know you. Oh, that's so yeah. he came that's up cool. on the roof and like, and it was like really fresh. It must have just got done. And I swear, I thought it was like, you know, a lot of guys wear uh, the sleeve to protect yeah. from the sun. And I thought he just got one that was like, it looked like a tattoo. I was like, I was laughing. I thought it was, and he's like, no, it's real. And I was like, shut up, whatever. And he's like, I'm serious. Look. Nah, and yeah. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> he's got like the Star Wars movie. He's got like a whole bunch of stuff up his arm. Yeah, it's real. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I like tattoos. I like, I got a couple tiny ones, but. And you've already answered your uh, hardest hit question. Well, so that, I don't think that was my uh, hardest hit. Oh, oh. Uh, I th- I blew right front of it in a Canon car at Dover. That hurt. Oh yeah, it's not yeah. the place you want to blow right yeah. front. Yeah. <laughs> um, no thanks. Honestly, so I wrecked at Bristol two years ago in a spire truck, and I got hit. I hit like flush on the door, and it bent the center section. That was probably the hardest hit I've. Did it spin had. all the way around and hit driver door? No, it was on the right side. Oh on yeah, the right hard, side. solid. Like just, Ugh. just yeah. bent everything yeah. in the. Yeah. yeah, that was the hardest one I've had. The I solid think. hits to the right side or left side are probably the. So I'll never forget. Like, the, like Priest, Priest, Priest's wreck scared me the other day because yeah. he hit flush the driver's side like that, and that's usually yeah. one that really it's hard. And it, and it took him a couple minutes to get out. I'm sure it knocked the wind out of him. I remember though talking about Dover, uh, Bubba. We were the first year we went there. Oh yeah, we yeah. went and uh, those Canon days were stacked, oh, dude. So we were there and we were running okay, and then I forget what happened. We got a tire rub. And <laughs> and I'm like I'm like run the top like because it's like 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 I had a halfway break or something I can't remember so there was like ten laps to the halfway break I'm like man just run the top take it easy get us to that break so we can steadily lap and then we'll you know they can fix it so <laughs> he runs the top all right we get to the break fix it they pull the fender out they said all right we got it cleared I said all right good there's everything good yeah everything's fine I said maybe just run the top for like two laps here to make sure we're good he's like all right. So he runs the top for like two laps. I said, I don't see any smoke. Everything looks fine. He went to the bottom. As soon as he went to the bottom, boom, boom. He blew it right front and pounded the fence. I was like, I was like, are you okay? He's like, oh. He yeah, couldn't even talk. I was like, oh, my There's God. not a good way to wreck it, Dover. No. Like, no matter and what. And if you don't hit a wall hard, somebody's probably hitting you. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Dover wouldn't want to be. I Dover. wouldn't want to right there. And, like, when I had that wreck, I, I had torn my ACL playing basketball like a week before. So that That's just, fun. yeah, not Climbing fun at out. All. Yeah, Freddie did that before. Yeah, playing basketball. <laughs> yeah. I've not torn my ACL. The the, the Freddie Jumpman logo. Yeah, yeah. That. Air Freddie. Air Freddie. It's Air not Freddie. really a Jumpman. It's like a it's a plump hop, man. It's like a plump, hot man plump, or something. Plump man <laughs> logo. 
Oh, moving on to what an idiot. Rajo, would you like to kick things off? Um, anybody you want to call an idiot? Hmm, actually, let me think. Did anybody send you a really dumb text this week after you won? Like, can you think of anybody? Oh, no. Nice and supportive? Hmm. I'm usually not the guy that's like, you, talk you, shit. You don't have to call anybody you need. It. Let, let's go. Let's, let's, let's make a more positive life positive. for you. Who was, and it's hard to say best, but like, who was either maybe like the most surprising or like the coolest text you got this week? Well, it was crazy. So, so Corey Hine came up in victory lane. And I was like, dude, like, I, you don't have to do that. Like, that was a, a big deal, you know, just because, like, you race so hard against those guys for years. Like, I've raced against Corey since, since K&N, right, and, and Nick and Taylor. And, like, getting, like, the respect for those guys was was pretty special, you know, because, like, like I, I don't want to say I've had run-ins with people, right, but you have disagreements as you as you do naturally, like, if, when you grow up racing against guys. So that was pretty cool. Um, I honestly can't think about a what an idiot. Again, I would just probably say myself. I kind of – I kind of – maybe you, you know who you give to? You give to me. Because I positioned myself very poorly. We come out of the elevator, right? And mm. I'm like, oh, uh, Victory Lane's right here. Let me shoot over here real oh, quick. Oh, so yeah, because that's where it comes out, right? So I, was like, I was like, I can, I can just go over here real quick. And he's coming. I can see him on TV. He's coming. So they stop him. I didn't realize they were going to stop you. Because right? I didn't I thought, know where to go. I thought you were going to I thought you were going to gonna drive in. And so then, well, they stop him. Now I'm like, I don't know, 20 feet ahead of him. So I'm like, should I walk over there? I don't know if I'm allowed to walk over there. Mm. Well, then I didn't realize he's going to do a burnout from there to well, Victory Lane. I was trying Lane. to, but then I was like, and, and oh, wait, like, there's I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, I don't, don't stop your burnout. Keep going. But say, hey, high fives. I'm out. Like, but I was like, so you can give it to me. I, I kind of screwed up your, your post race burnout in the Victory Lane. But yeah, that was a hell of a, I thought you were going to get in trouble. Did anybody bitch at you about f***ing the grass up? No, I didn't mean to do I <laughs> promise I did not mean to do that. Because I'm like, I literally, I'm like, bro, it's literally a truck race. Why am I over here? Because I was trying to do like, you remember the burnouts Joe used to do? Yeah, like the, I saw I, you get a little speed up and I was trying spin to do out. that and yeah. I just I so messed that, up. So I don't know if everybody knows this, but it's a it's a big no no. It's a big no no to screw oh, the yeah. grass up before the cup race. I was like, oh, oh <laughs> I, did I not saw mean him to sliding. Do that. I was like, oh no, he's gonna end yeah. up in the grass. And then as soon as I got on the grass, I'm like, I'm like lifting. I'm like, oh no no no. So uh, that's funny. Uh, Who you got, TJ? You gotta call him an idiot. I'm trying to think of some instances that happened in either race and. It was. Uh, it was a pretty clean weekend, I think. Yeah, like, and I, I mean, I, I couldn't, I didn't see any local racing this weekend or anything that happened. So I'm not sure. I know they raced at Kenley, so, but I didn't, I didn't watch those. So races. I have to yeah. just bust somebody's chops. Um, it's really not an idiot, but I, there's a friend of mine, so I get to, I get to, I have a microphone. He doesn't at this point. So, <laughs> um, Daniel Hemrick, I love you to death. DH, you oh, cannot no. speed on pit road every week, and he has done it this year so far. Oh, yeah, you can. Ross every, does every race. Every race, Daniel has got a pit road penalty. Ross has too. Really. Yeah, that's good. I think so. I think I, I saw. I didn't even know. It. And somebody, I seen a note this morning where Hamrick has he's three for three, and speeding penalties this hmm. year. So if that, hopefully that's true. If not, maybe it, if it was Ross, Ross, you're the idiot. Then I but, think Ross is three for three, at least two. Yeah. So, it, but like, and you just you know we talk about how hard it is to gain spots and stuff. You put yourself that far, which I think he recovered and got into the top twenty at the end of the race, Daniel. But uh, yeah, there was some wave rounds you can't there. Do that. Yeah. There were two opportunities for wave rounds, so I'm sure you. Probably I should really call if you really want to call out idiots. The people that were responding to the video of Bubba watching Raja win that race take the cake this week. Because some of them are. I seen one that was like, Do this I race know? Because I haven't really looked at it. It was, just, it was like, this race is definitely fixed. Why else would they send a camera crew with Bubba to watch the end of the race? Oh, that was a camera crew. It was, <laughs> it was, it was like, Amanda. It's, Amanda. <laughs> it's Amanda's cell phone. <clears throat> I was like, damn, what kind of camera you got on your cell yeah. phone? It's just, you know, it's That's the funny. same stuff. And then it's like, a, like Bubba's trying to make it about him. I'm like, and then he's like, oh, Bubba told her to film. I'm like, no, he didn't. She's doing that because she knows he would like to see it and uh, maybe dumb. share it. Like, it's just, uh, it's just typical. Oh, it's fixed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see the script Darbs. this week. Yeah. Darbs. How'd you like this one? <laughs> so dumb. They're like, oh, well, it was, you know, they just, it's. Just. Freddie got his script and was like, oh, stuck along the that. Damn it. <laughs> That's why I, oh, I go out Saturday night. I'm only going to run about 20 competitive Good laps Lord. tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if. There was a script and Freddie read it and saw that. <laughs> He'd have been hammered Saturday night. I was about night. to say, he already would have. Been. Like, all right. Oh, man. Let's uh, make picks for Phoenix. And shout out to Brett. He's not here, but he did win. Oh, went out uh, on a limb there, this didn't This week he? with Larson. Wow. Uh, I saw him pounding his chest on was Twitter. He? Oh, look, girls, I picked the winner. Yeah. I think... I think TJ, you TJ goes first. were yeah. first with Christopher. Yeah, or you I lost. So totally screwed, Christopher. Who's your pick there. for Phoenix? Um, do we have a? Sh did I miss the? Uh, sheet? It's in the group me. Oh, 
so we don't have our list on here. Yeah, it's there. No, well, the picks not that the, the oh, yeah, yeah. 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 That's how you do it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, we can't pick them more than once until the playoffs. So it's on the bottom of the group. Me, I'll pick mine. Who you got? Who's gonna win? You just tell me who's gonna I win. I think this the week. twenty-four is gonna do good because I know, like, they're obviously really good in the fall, but like as they, as a the track rubber, they kind of fell off. Mm-hmm. So I think, with a cooler racetrack, I think so obviously it's be hot. Is it gonna be hot? But uh, compared so, to the fall, oh, though, cool. compared to the fall, though, what was fall? I mean, I it's know. it's November and. In Phoenix, I'm telling you, when I looked at Freddie's, not gonna like. I didn't want to. I may be wrong. Didn't want to ruin his what, day. What, I mean, it's <laughs> hot, hot. Like it's hot. I think oh, it's f-ing March. How could it be so hot? I'm, maybe it won't be. Let's hope. Um, 77. Oh, so 77. That's good. It's I not, think that's the 24. Like 24. Like 24. I think it's 24. That's not cold though. All right. I'm going. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, I go. Uh, go I'll first. take Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain. Casey, you're up next. That's a good. That's a good pick too. Uh. Who did Tyler tell you to pick? So, Brett, do you... Uh... So, I, I got backup picks for him. Oh, you do have backup yeah, picks. Yeah, he okay. Sent, he sent cool. me his number one through, like, four. So, Chastain's off the board, so I got another name. All right, cool. I will take Blaney. All right, Brett's going with... Uh... I go first. Oh. Which, Raja, I'm just going to save Byron. I almost took Byron, but... Oof. I could... I would have took the 24 or the one, to be honest. Or the one. <sighs> I will. I'll, you know what? Rajah's on a good roll this week. I'll take Billy Byron. Mm-hmm. Who does Brett get? All right. So Chastain's off the board. Byron's off the board. I think Blaney got picked as well, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So C Bell. So he got it's his fourth not a bad pick. pick either. Oh, C-Bell. it's all championship four guys. <laughs> Weird. <Yeah. Crazy. laughs> Brett swinging for no. the fence uh, early this year, isn't he? A little bit, yeah. He's trying to get get a big lead. What are we doing with the dinner? Because I have been not. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, I have whenever not, you guys want, I'm I'm home. When so. the heck is? We uh, should, Red, isn't Tyler buying Tyler's it again? Yeah. yeah, he's not buying because well, he who, didn't who, lose. So who lost, Casey? No, we. I did. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It's you, Casey. Yeah. Lost the year before. Yeah. Casey, yeah. you should buy. Casey you actually lost, owe me Casey because Casey I didn't go to the year one. before and I bought dinner. So I, I didn't. So I don't know. Yeah. Reddick said he's got the car service. Casey so. owes me dinner. Okay. For what? Because I didn't go two years ago, and that was I was. You the that's your fault. You gotta buy no. TJ's. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's sorry. Right. Casey sorry, will not buy mine. sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, anyways, what can we expect as we watch Phoenix this weekend? Tons of passing. Um, Shaded spotter stand. Yeah. That's right. Did you have to be like? Uh, attached tethered? to the... No, we were fine. Does I mean, Freddie really, look like the type it, of guy that needs to be tethered? <laughs> it, <laughs> honestly, I don't know about you. It didn't. It wasn't as bad as I was expecting when I seen how high the winds were supposed to be. Like uh, that banner, that that thing is a lifesaver. Whenever they I, put I, that, is. that that well, banner up, on you the weren't floor, there. I, I wasn't there when it was when we fixed around. it. Yeah, yeah, we fixed it. Um, <laughs> do you remember um, a couple of years ago at Phoenix when Lambert had that uh, giant ass? Uh, yeah, like bug on his. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we get that all the time. <laughs> TJ usually ends up with them, the big like praying mantis. Yeah, or no, yeah. yeah. This the is the Bristol? content oh my we God. need to see. Uh, oh, terrifying. But uh, that one jumped on her. Man. I don't know. If he, if I have always, uh, I always go back to McMurray's quote on here on this sh- on this show when he said Phoenix hasn't had a good race since 1989. But I yeah. disagree. <laughs> 1989. No, I don't even have. Well, I mean, what, what year, year were you born? 2002. Jesus. I Anyways, was I don't want to know. For two years. <laughs> um, <laughs> Raja, what what do you think we can expect as we watch? Um, I don't know. I always wonder. Like, so last fall, the seams had kind of grown in one and two, um, like really to the point where like the truck it didn't affect it that much, but the Xfinity car, like if you got your right side tire on it, like it, like on not on purpose, like it really messed up your balance. So. It's interesting to see how those have kind of grown over time. Um, I don't know. I think with how that stuff drives, it's always weird to me, like conceptually, like compared to the truck stuff and the Xfinity stuff, like truck arms and stuff like that, like how it, how it sits on the straightaways and how's it, how it works. So I, I hope it ages a little bit more. I hope that like the track surface kind of evens out in terms of grip level because I know like when they apply that stuff it usually kind of hurts the original surface so I don't know hopefully it ages a little bit more and those seams come become like a little bit more of a factor too yeah uh you know it's so hopefully we just you know it's good racing the restarts are insane um it's the craziest restart we'll have all year oh one thing so Obviously, truck race at Phoenix was crazy. Part of that, dude, like they moved the restart zone all the way to start finish line. Well, so what was, do you expect yeah, the is truck gonna race happen? Was, yeah, the truck race, the restart zone was in yeah. the wrong spot. Yeah, so that, that's part of the problem. Like, yeah. what do you, <laughs> like, what do you expect? I think the Xfinity race will be good. 
Good. I, I like the Xfinity cars. Though. Yeah. The cup race, to me, it's going to be those guys are, I mean, not like there's really a lot of, there's a ton of talent in the cup series and those guys don't make a lot of mistakes. So it's going to be hard to pass expectedly, like just like it was hard to pass at Vegas. So it's going to be hard to pass Phoenix. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, air blocking. Um, not quite as much as Ve- as Vegas, but yeah, I, it's just, it's going to be a tough race. You hope you need to start off the weekend good. Uh, last year we had someone, uh, I think Cole Custer had to qualify our car in the fall because Brad went home for the oh, yeah. birth of his child there. And then um, we started from the back and I think we got all the way up to inside the top 10. So, which was, I mean, I'll tell you, it was hard. Like it was a, uh, it was tough to do. So it's going to be, um, I don't expect to see a lot of cars come from the back and make it to the front. So qualifying is going to be a huge deal there. For sure. Um, unfortunately, before we leave, um, I seen another Zach Brewer passed yeah. away last night. Um, I wasn't sure if it was um, confirmed. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, that's, I mean, I've known Zach for a long time, modified racer. You probably raced with him. I raced in against the dash, him. Yeah. Dash stuff back in the day. He finally won Bowman Gray this year. Thank God. He, I know that was something he was really, really looking forward to. Um, I really don't know what happened, no circumstances whatsoever, but uh, just, just sad to see another loss in our, yeah, our racing family. It's tough to see, man. I, I ran against him in 03 in the Goodies Dash Series, and, man, he was always fun to hang out with and talk to, like somebody you could go up to and always smile, and, and you know, we we had some good races with each other, and uh, really, like, he was just fun to be around. Like, yeah. you want, like, good, genuine person, uh, definitely tough news to, to read this morning. Well, well, hopefully we'll see um, see some people out in Phoenix. I, I, I'm still blown away by the amount of DBC fans I run into. Oh, or, every week, pre race or whatever. Yeah, um, you're off this week, right? I mean, we're uh, off. Two yeah, weeks so or so, right? We got a uh, no. We no, we were Bristol. Bristol. Oh, that's Dakota, right. Yeah, so yeah, Bristol's coming up. That we got day. um, you know that Spring Mountain School, in out in Vegas. Mm-hmm. So with Ron Phillips, so we'll go there. A couple of a couple of Chevy guys going out there, and then I'll, I got some stuff in LA. So you're going back to Vegas. Yeah, I'd, it didn't make sense to just do nothing out there for a couple of days. Like we got comp meetings and stuff today. Yeah. So dude That's wants good. to get out and do some. Racing. That's what I said. Like you know, like I obviously text Roger the other day to see, come on the show, and he's like, "Yeah, I got some comp meetings." I text him this morning, you know, the address and stuff, and he didn't read it. But um, <laughs> so I was on the way. <laughs> Somebody's a little bitter. But uh, but he was coming from where you work out this morning, like yeah, the, yeah. the tech center. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, obviously he's right back to work as, as fast as he can be. So man, we we're pulling for you this year, and I'll be happy to text you if you do anything stupid, and I'll be happy I to text it. you when you don't, when you it. win. So good luck and congratulations. Again. Yeah. Thank thanks y'all for having for me on. By. Yeah, glad you come by, and and uh, hopefully thanks for putting up with Casey. Yeah. Brett's hopefully- gonna, Brett's going to make you come back when he's here. He's very yeah, bitter that you're not here, that he's not here with your first appearance. But just win again, and we'll have you back when Deal. he's here. Thank y'all for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to Dorba Clear on YouTube. YouTube. And have a great week. Yeah, please that, do that. I hope this show was cracked. Is yeah. This show will not be cracked. The, if you keep it, voting and subscribing, or what do we need to subscribe and subscribe, like, uh, hit yeah. that sma- smash that like button and Crack subscribe. That like button. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey, right, subscribe to our YouTube channel, by the way. Yes, we got it. We need feedback that. about all the videos and, and yeah. uh, watch this thing tonight. Well, that was and, a great way to And Denny it. sucks. So Did we got to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thanks. Thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.